What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. How's it going, Greg? I know you have a lot of people to intro, but I just wanted you to know that lately I've been pouring almonds into a little tiny, like one of those little tiny dishes you put your tea bag on. You know, you'll take the tea like bag around. It the, yeah, it's like a tiny little ramekin. It's about this big. And sure. it's just so that I get a handful of almonds. But the flaw in my plan is that every time I, I do it, I refill it five times. So it's less of a handful, more of just the whole jar that goes you're into that over the span of. You get a bigger bowl and put them all mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. But then you're like Portillo. If I leave Portillo's a bowl of Portillo food on the ground, he's going to sit there and eat all of it. Now, it, I mean? it, like he can't it, control himself. On that point, did you do you know that horses will eat themselves to death if you keep giving them food? Because this was a huge point of contention, like on the last podcast that you dropped. No, out I, I know okay. firsthand, Nick. I know cool. firsthand. <laughs> Andy, Andy wait, was taking wait, care of his on. brother's horse. Like this thing just keeps eating. It must be starving. Got to keep feeding it. Andy, did you see his uh, horse eat itself to death? Uh, it's a story for another time, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> that man who has the story, of course, is the Hispanic heartthrob Texas treat Latino heat, clicking heads and ripping them to shreds. The globe trotting, head shotting from Twitch.tv slash Andy Cortez. I know you have a lot of people in intro, Greg, but I just need to kind of say something that's happened to me recently sure i as you all know on this kind of funny podcast um recommended what could be a new reese's pieces to the reese's hershey company group yeah um and they're, we're getting closer we're getting closer we're getting sure. closer these are oh. reese's peanut these are reese's big cups with peanuts inside of them sure now I've also seen Reese's big cups with Reese's pieces inside of them. We're getting close to getting that toffee in there, and that's when we will perfect the next evolution of the big cup. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, great. Sorry. In the middle of that, Nick texted me a better uh, the intro he has for Roger that I guess is better than who framed Roger for Crony. Instead, from the New York streets, bring in Premier Pro Heat, clicking mice and feeling nice. The After Effects using, smiling, deucing, undisputed king of editing from kindoffunny.com, Roger Procroni. Now, Greg, I know you have a lot of people to intro, <laughs> but I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting a pedicure tomorrow. I just wanted to let everyone know. Ooh, I'm uh, looking fun. forward to that. My feet are what brought fucked that up on? this weekend. This weekend. This weekend just fucked up my feet real bad. Your feet a lot are of right. walking. Those feet were made walking. for walking, but that's what they mm-hmm. did. No, they're made for editing. <laughs> you need some of those pedals. Yeah. Like Kevin. That last voice, of course, begin, belongs to Forbes 30 Under 30, a.k.a. the second best baby blues in San Francisco, a.k.a. the verified one at Tim Getty's. I am surprised I've lived my entire life without getting a manicure or a pedicure of any wow. form. I don't like them. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I would, I'd imagine I wouldn't like them because, I mean, you know, Nick, I know you love your, your haircuts and all that stuff. Yeah. I don't. I, I wish that I could just do all of my own mm-hmm. touching myself myself. You know I, well, I, mean? I can. Yeah. Kevin will touch you. We'll get, but I also like the idea of it, you know. Well, like it's, it's nice to be pampered, pampered right? That's exactly. and that's the thing is, I, when I, I had a wedding over the weekend, I'm sure we're going to I'm sure we're going to talk about our weekend stories in a hot second. But uh, I was like, I got to get my hair cleaned up, and so I just randomly popped down to a person I hadn't met before uh, down to my local barber. Never worked with him before. He was just had the opening, and it's never a good thing, right, Greg? We're like, ah, this guy's open at eleven o'clock. That's a prime spot on a Sunday. This guy can't be that good. But to his credit, he did a great job, but he was very much lacking in the pampering department. He did uh, the hot towel mas- like thing that yeah. I like, but my other guy used to just massage it almost to the point where I asphyxiate. And I'm like, oh, I'm a little claustrophobic, but it feels so good. And he was just keep going. Tim Gay is from Kind of Funny. Hold on, Nick. I don't mean to put you on blast right now, but I'm going to be fucking <clears throat> hissed at you if you cut the mullet. Okay, thank no, God. Yeah, it's still still no, I just cleaned it up. You were, Bro, you are you kidding talking me? about not doing your haircut. Nah. I was proud of you because yeah. I'm like, keep rocking this, baby. So, no, okay, first off, I'm, I'm, I'm bummed out that I didn't get it before my comedy shows. But I did. I was like, I'm going to a wedding. And it's one of my one of my friends who's also a comic. Who I think it's been on some of our content. Janesh, if you, if you watched our Skyfall in review, he had a dynamite drop in for five seconds in his PJs. But um, I was like, I got to go to his wedding with a mullet. And everyone that saw me was like, ew. And it was, it worked. It was yeah. perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, believe it or not before. Well, first off, there's a, <laughs> I hate it. That we have so many people on this podcast and it is because there's a lot to unpack here. Number one, Tim, you should blow Gia's mind and take her out for Manny Petty's today, this weekend. You and her just go out uh-huh. and have some fun. She'd have this. She'd enjoy that. She'd love that. Is yeah. Tim frozen? That'd yeah. be a nice thing. Nice oh, 
No, he was just processing the information slowly. Number Mm -hmm. two, I have this information in my head, so now all of you have to have it in the live chat on patreon.com slash kind of funny. Jonathan Stab wrote, pedicure sounds like an antidote for pedophiles. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. On that note, we have three other people currently on the call with us from kindoffunny.com. Well, I guess four if you count Kevin, but he's always here. Uh the first one, of course, is the future class of video games blessing at Ioye Jr. Greg, now I know you have a lot of people introduced on this call. Sure. But uh a while ago, I want to say about over a decade ago, I did get a manicure on on only one finger. On only my thumb. It was like a free trial sort of thing. I was walking through the mall and they were like, hey. Whoa, it was a free trial for one finger? (laughs) Yeah, they were like, hey, let let us like clean up your thumbnail. And I was like, all right, bet. And it was the coolest thing. Because that my thumbnail was smooth for legit months. Wow. Yeah. Never went back to get the full manicure, but I would I would 10 out of 10 do it again. One happy customer right there. Yeah. (laughs) You know what? This is all I needed. Thanks, everybody. (laughs) You got nine other fingers, sir. Nah, this is all I need. The one. This this one's my favorite. Luckily, I He's the master of hype. It's Snowbike Mike. Yo, what's going on, Greg? I know you got a lot of people introduced, but uh, I'm here to tell some stories. And really fuck shit up. So get ready. I'm bringing an energy today, baby. Oh, oh there's an energy, energy to this podcast already, ladies and gentlemen. And rounding out all the people on this, I didn't do the counting. Uh, she, of course, is Christmas in July. It's Joey Noel. Greg, I know you've introduced a lot of people here on this podcast, but I just have a question. Is a manicure a cure for men? Mm, I hope so. Oh. Yeah. I'm finally. My finally. Well, things start to feel, feel the effects and he bounced. He's like, no, I can't let you do this. You can't take more of my power. It's like, it's Samson's hair. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've, we've uh, assembled this motley crew of kind of funny folks because, of course, uh, this weekend, for the first time in 2021, all of kind of funny as an organization uh, assembled together to hang out with the exception of Barrett, who got a head cold. But everybody else was there. Roger flew in. Mike drove down to, from Tahoe. We hung out. We went to dinner, and a whole bunch of shenanigans went on that we figured it was time to recap because we're going to have a normal show. You know, we're going to get out of here. We're going to do the whole thing. And Tim's like, no, this episode needs to be just talking about all the crazy things that happened this weekend. Because if you didn't know, that's the kind of stuff we do here because this is the kind of funny podcast each and every week for sometimes – 18. Nine best friends gather around this table, each coming to bullshit about whatever bullshit's going on in their lives. If you like that, you can head over to patreon.com slash kind of funny, where, of course, you could kick us a few bucks to write in with your own questions, comments, concerns. You could be watching the show live like Keegan Hill is, Mike L is, Lexi G R. Uh, of course, if you're watching live, you don't have anything to do. You're just watching, hanging out, and doing it. I started doing the you're wrong thing, but there's no you're wrong here. We don't care if we're wrong on this show, right, Andy? <laughs> Correct, correct, correct. Thanks, Andy. I try uh, of course, wrong. on patreon.com slash kind of funny, you can get every episode of the kind of funny podcast ad free. You can get it with the exclusive post show we do each and every week, twice a week, often with guests. And of course, you could support us, get all sorts of bonus access, tint, 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 tim, tim, in, in, intimate with a tim. Tim, intimate, intimate, tim, intimate, 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 tim. 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 Yeah. What is happening? Eteminate. Oh, Coco. Someone help no. Coco. Coco needs oh, help. Coco. Leave Coco alone. Not everybody He's watches Coco. both pieces of content. <laughs> but the ones who do understand that, all right? Not everybody got every reference in Loki this week, but the ones who did were like, that's cool. Right now, there's some guy chuckling himself. He's like, I remember the Coco bit. <laughs> that was a fun time on Gamescast. Blessing sure didn't enjoy it. Anyways, you can get every show over on Patreon.com slash kind of funny along with a bunch of different bonuses. However, if you have no bucks, to toss our way it's no big deal head over to youtube.com slash kind of funny podcast services around the globe each and every week twice a week to get brand spanking new episodes housekeeping for you speaking of loki greg way there's only one more episode of loki left ladies and gentlemen we of course will continue reacting to them you get a new loki reaction each and every wednesday on youtube.com slash kind of funny and podcast services around the globe and the reaction feed that's where it is right tim is that what it's called mm-hmm. Uh, of course, uh, once Loki's done, it will enter into the hallowed halls of MCU in review. Speaking of which, Black Widow is out this week, meaning you'll get one. Black Widow in review, then Loki in review, more ragu bagger than you can shake a scepter at. Thank you to our Patreon producers, uh, Mark Johnson, Julian the Gluten-Free Gamer, and Steve Powers. Today, we're brought to you by Stamps and Babble, but I'll tell you about that later. And I love the idea that it's just stamps, not stamps.com, just straight up stamps. stamps. Anyway. They're trying to own stamps. That's what's happening right there. That's what See, it is. We're just stamps. Now. You know what I, mean? I respect that. I respect it. 
So, Timothy, I want to hand it over to you. You seem to like you have eyes on the prize. You've been calling things out. You you seem to know a lot of the shenanigans. How do you want to tackle Kind of Funny Weekend 2021? Well, I feel like uh, we could tackle it kind of in, in order of events, right? Like, we, we let's start with we decided uh, a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, I guess at this point, that we all we always know E3 is a difficult time for everybody. And it's like we want to celebrate that. So we usually go out to a big team dinner and, like, have a lot of fun, do a little party. But this year, work from home, all that stuff, and, you know, especially this is the first time we've had people that work with Kind of Funny that aren't – with us in san francisco with sure. mike and tahoe with roger over in new york and we're like fuck it let's fly roger out let's like have mike drive down because it doesn't really make sense for him to fly from tahoe uh and then let's do a nice little dinner let's all get together let's have some fun and that's exactly what we did the first time kind of funny was was all together and kevin kevin planned the most kevin weekend possible which was packing every single moment yeah. with activities that the, the entire time. team could opt opt in or out of throughout the weekend and that's exactly what we're going to talk about because you know best laid plans right greg best yeah. laid plans the best laid plans of course <laughs> so yeah you know? i want to start i guess then with uh roger and mike and we'll start with raj how did it feel to finally get out here and be a kind of funny employee because of course you've come to san francisco before but never yeah. as hey i have a job here it was jarring house how it immediately was just great like it because i was like i was so scared the vibes were gonna be off because like you know you're interacting with somebody on on, on discord on slack right you're like yeah. oh what if it's just gonna be awkward and weird in person immediately i'm in the car with joey and kevin and it's just a fucking podcast it is just off the rails it's hilarious kevin drives exactly how i imagine kevin would drive <laughs> <laughs> Did he, did, did he try to launch you into the Guys, sun? Because that's what he does with us. To be fair to me, it was two in the morning. All right, I was a little sleepy. Yeah, yeah. Let's make it somehow more dangerous than it would have been. Yeah, yeah. We're immediately going to McDonald's, uh, getting McDoubles, and I'm learning about you know how you guys have um, mustard on your burgers and everything like that because that's something we don't have in New York. Uh, it was just great. And then also my favorite thing, the thing that I think really brought it together was that uh joey has been you know with kevin you know dealing with his his craziness alone and kind of feeling the uh feeling it feeling a little bit lonely in the kevinness and when he showed us his like uh um, his... <laughs> what did he us... show you he why showed is this coming up video. why is this coming up <laughs> So Kevin, this whole this is the my, podcast yeah. is just about the shenanigans you got involved well, in. Let, it's let, two let in the me, morning. You got some McDoubles. Let me what are some add, shenanigans, let me add Roger? a little bit more. So okay. I, I, I hit sure. up I hit up uh Mike and I'm like, hey man, what and this is uh what Thursday at like three o'clock. Like, like, hey Mike, when are you heading over? I wanna like make sure that like you know I'm there to like it'll be like, hey, look, this is the house. What, what, <laughs> what, what? what? <laughs> Mike, what, no. what, how, what's already wrong? No, what's already and, wrong Andy, 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 I'm going to tell my side. <laughs> I, Andy? No, but my side is your side also, Mike, so keep going. No, this isn't making fun of you, Kevin. This is a Mike thing. Okay, all right. So it's like, all right, great. Uh, and then uh, I hit up Roger. I'm like, when are you heading over? And he's like, oh, I, I should be landing 10 o'clock. And he's like, oh, you know, like, I, should I Uber? And I was like, no, nah, we'll go pick you up. You, you, the airport's real close by. Not a big deal. And he's like, all right, cool. Yeah, you're king, whatever. I'm like, yeah, it's great. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, okay, all right, well, I'm going to, I don't know, play video games with Joey for a while or something. And uh, then I get a text from him being like, if Roger being like, hey, man, my flight got delayed. It's, I'm now arriving at 11. It's like, oh, all right, no big deal, no big deal. It's still pretty early, whatever. I get like five more texts from Roger being like, eventually it's delayed till two in the morning. And the yeah, entire that's time. Yeah, ride right there. Well, the entire time I've been like, dude, it's not a big deal. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I, I'm tired as shit. It's been a long week. I'm going to I'm gonna go to sleep. It's like 8 o'clock, not a big deal. So I hit up Mike because, like, I kind of think, all right, Mike said originally he was going to leave at, like, 5. So he'll probably be landing, like, arriving here around that time because it only takes, like, three and a half hours the way Mike drives to get here. Is this story enhanced at all by the room in the background? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Just <putting that> <laughs> 100%. You guys forced me to change it to a later time, and this is what you get. Uh, it's an earlier time. No, it was later. It, it was, no. originally was at 11, and everyone would get upset. Anyways, so I call Mike, and I'm like, hey, Mike, what's going on? Are you heading over yet? And he's like, oh, no, I haven't left yet. I'm like, what time do you think you're going to leave? Oh, I'm waiting for the sun to set. I was like, Mike, it's 8.30. Like, what? So you think you're going to leave soon? He's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just waiting. I was like, all right, Mike. And I was like, I'm just going to go to sleep. And I'm sure when I wake up, Mike will be 
getting here. But of course, I Mike, wake how long up, is the trip from Tahoe to San Francisco? It's three and a half hours. It is a hot. Three it's and a half hours. 172 mm-hmm. miles. It is three and a half hours, give or take. Uh, could be four hours, could be three hours, depending on how you drive. Sure. And so, like, let me let me state my side because Kevin's Please, doing a whole lot of the court now. Let me just get to Rod. Kevin, point. I said the court now recognizes Mike Howard. So here's the deal. I'm like Roger. I've been there, done that with these jabronis. You know what I mean, Roger? I've been here. I've seen them all. I, I'm yeah. in no rush, right? I'm in no rush. Sure. I'm like, man, I could get some Valorant games in with the squad. <laughs> I could just games. hang out and play some more Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. And so I had a packed day on Thursday, right? I had to do the stream and then Wait, into Wait, hold on. Cortez wants to interject already. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> we're we're there sitting in the discord and we're just hanging out and mike's like so what's going on y'all want to get some games in and they're like dude you have to leave tonight and he goes yeah i can fucking do that whenever and i was like wait you're coming over here tonight and he goes yeah i think so i was like mike it's like fucking eight o'clock what are you doing he goes, ah, i figure it out you know I, look if i go down like at midnight i get there at three i was like yeah but you don't know if Ke- like you're waking up kevin and paula at three in the morning <laughs> i'll sleep in my car and then he was like, if I get there at three, I can hang with Roger. I was like, yeah, but for Roger, it's six in the morning. <laughs> He's Roger on sleep. Like, <laughs> so, so I ended up like leaving that call, not knowing what time Mike was going to head down to San Francisco. Continue, Mike. Wait, so, real, 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 quick, real quick, Mike, yeah, I want to yeah. say the context of this is uh, Joey lives with Kevin. Kevin has some spare bedrooms. So Roger and Mike were both also mm-hmm. coming to stay mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Kevin. So that, that's Good just call, something call. that I want everyone to understand. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was great. It's going to be a great time. Mike, all of that would have been fine had you just told me, hey, I'm going to come. I'm, I'm planning to get there when when uh, Roger's coming there. But instead, you keep giving me a run around of like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be there. Like, Ke- I'll be there Kevin like calls hours. me at five. I'm like, uh, maybe I'll be there, Kevin. Maybe I'll be there. He calls me at seven. I'm like, you know what, Kevin? The sun is up. I don't want to drive four hours in the sunshine. I- I'll come when the sun sets. He calls me at 830. I said, you know what, Kevin? I think I lost my keys. So then at about... <laughs> I think it was 1130 at night. I was like, you know what? I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. So I get in the car and I start to shoot down the hill, right? I make it down the mountains pass. And if many of you know, when you hit Placerville, that's when it opens up the Mm -hmm. four lane highway straight across the state of California. Right. And I picked up a road dog and everybody knows when you're on a road trip, you get a road dog. That's somebody who goes in front of you and they go like five miles faster than you, but you stay next to them. Right. So me and my road dog, we're going a hot 90 to a hundred police. I wasn't going that fast, but we're just whipping. Right. I mean, we made, make it to san francisco at 1 30 a.m in the morning i'm on time i'm like wow great job mike you burned on a lot time. of time there I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> first of all it was 1 45 because the timing worked out perfectly exactly one- so it worked out perfectly it's right kevin because i showed up at the front door when kevin roger and joey arrived i got myself two hamburgers yes. and i was treated to an incredible bed and breakfast that is kevin's house so and let me tell y'all is- uh, oh. Tell me. I, I was just saying, this is where. Oh, I was just going to say this is where the intersection of the stories come uh-huh. into play. Yeah. Now, this is when, when we all come when, together. Well, no, within Kevin, he shows us the Nest camera I, of like of of like Mike outside the yeah. house. And he's so, like, "Look, it's Mike, and it's a black image. I it's swear to God, it's a fucking it black, a image. black image, and absolutely <laughs> black." And Roger, I did Roger. Look at each other. We just started laughing. I'm like, I'm so glad that it wasn't is a finally black here. Image. You so understand I, we, the Kevinness of so that is life. You know, we were waiting for Mickey D's to give us her food, and I'm like, I bet you, like Roger have has access to the door. It's a code. You go in, and then I told him like, hit a like, go straight down the hallway, hit a left. That's the room. I was like, I bet you he's gonna wait in his car. And I checked on my camera, and sure enough, there he is waiting in his car. And I see him, and I'm like, look at him. He's waiting in his car. And I'm like, that's not a Jeep. And everyone is just like, there's, there's, no, there's no car there. You're showing us black screen. It's upsetting. It was a black screen. <laughs> they, they arrive. They arrive, everybody, just so you know. And we are treated to just... A, a life of luxury. Kevin is giddy as all can be to see us. Joey's happy. And Kevin is now taking us to each one of our rooms. He's laid out towels. He's made the bed. He's got us deodorant. He's got a shampoo, body wash. He's running us through the gambit of how great he set this house up. And I got to say, Kevin did an incredible job because I felt like I was somebody special. You know what I mean? It was Thank really nice, Kevin. Thank you very much. And we sat down. 
you know, they popped a couple of beers. We we stood around, ate some McDonald's, went to bed at about 3.30 a.m. the first night. That was the end of the first day. Dawn of the I mean, second day. Day zero. <laughs> do, do, do we introduce the tarantula now, or is that later? When do we I mean, see... <laughs> it's a podcast, it's a, guys. It's a tarantula. It, it starts here, but I mean, we can we can just move it later. Just so clear. I, do I don't not, know the tarantula. Just, just so clear. I do what, not how does the tarantula, tarantula start in my house? The tarantula what? is ever flowing. The tarantula is always <laughs> present. Okay, mm-hmm. like the tarantula is something that you 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 you, you smoke. That's what a tarantula is. is. So, like, Roger, please, got, please I, give us the, the lay down on on the tarantula. All right. So here's the yeah. deal. I'm on vacation. Roger hits me up. He's like, "Man, I get to smoke with the big dog, Snowbike Mike." And I'm like, "Damn right, Roger. It's gonna be a Wiz Khalifa Snoop Dogg scenario going on right mm-hmm. now." Yeah. So yeah. I packed up a bunch of tarantulas, and if you don't know, tarantulas are pre rolled doobies that have hash in the middle, and then are lined and laced with keef all around it. They're like the ultimate doobie, right? It's never the good stuff to stay that laced. will make you, stare, make you stare at a wall type stuff as you smoke yeah. it. And, and so, I know it's because at one point in the weekend, which we'll get to. <laughs> one point. At one point in the weekend, I'm standing next to Snowbike Mike and Mark Smalls, who was in town that weekend too. And those two worlds collided in the most beautiful <laughs> way, where both of them were like, oh, we should smoke out. And then Mike pulled out a tarantula. But one of my other buddies had a spliff, which is Greg. What's a spliff? I have no That's right, Greg. idea. Marijuana and tobacco. <laughs> okay. That's what it is. And so they decided to smoke the marijuana and tobacco because they're both cigarette smokers, leaving Mike to just fucking take face. this entire tarantula right to the face. Thank Flash you. forward, grub steak, an hour no, later. No, no, don't tell the story. We're going to take it out. We are around too much. So Roger looks at me and he goes, you're going to have a beer with me and Joey. And I was like, no, but I'll hit this tarantula with you right now. He's like, I'm not ready for that. It's only 3 a.m. in the morning at day zero. I said, that's fine, Roger. I'll keep him strapped on my hip just in case because we're on vacation. And where where are you keeping him strapped on your hip? Yeah, a Game Boy patch. That you are uh, well, very self conscious about. You keep if asking you were- us, "Is the Game Boy Patch cool? Do we think this is cool?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's really cool. All, like uh, all the never TikTokers are, something's cool. All, all the TikTokers are doing it. I thought I should do it, and I thought I'd elevate it with the Game Boy Patch. Yeah. So Mike, you look great. Mike, I, another Thank question: you. Can you clarify? What is the Game Boy pouch? Is it one of those pouches, the travel cases that used to carry your Game Boy around, like the Correct. OG '90s Game Boy? Yes, yes, OG. it was over the mm-hmm. shoulder, one shoulder. Yep, uh-huh. yeah, it looks dope. Uh-huh. It looked good. Mm-hmm. I like had that thing strapped like to my hip. He had a Game Boy so, Advance SP in it. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. in case, so I packed the Game Boy XP just so everybody knows, because we were going to go see Nick on the boat cruise, and I was like, "What if one of the comedians sees this, tries to tease me, like, oh, you just posing?" And then I bust out the Game Boy, like, Damn. "Nah, bro, you trying to trade some Pokemon right now?" And just hit him with it, just in case. None of that ever happened, but I was prepared no. for it. No, that was not the, the 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 likelihood of that happening very low. But that's what we like about you, Mike. You're always ready for. He's got to be prepared. Anything, yeah. Ready. Uh, and that, that's day zero in my eyes. We woke up and I don't remember. So somebody has to guide the story. Uh, from there. We ordered stoned. breakfast. <laughs> Luchos. This is Friday. Oh, this, this is Friday. Friday. Yeah, so Friday. Friday. Friday we woke up. up. We, we got, got Luchos. Boys, some Luchos. Yep. Got and then we had a great the stream. Terrific yeah. stream, Joey. Uh, an we incredible stream. We got to pepper stream. in that you guys were in town, which nobody quite knew yet. Mm-hmm. But we got I love that nobody that. was acknowledging it, Joe. That <laughs> yeah. I was watching in chat and several people saying, Is Mike not going to talk about his new background? And then you all, I didn't see this, but you all mentioned that Roger just kind of popped in frame at one point and everybody's like, What is happening? And nobody said a damn word about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had a fun time. Uh, we played some Toki Toki Literature Club, which let me tell you guys, sure did. was a trip for a Friday afternoon. Uh, did that, and then we went. after that, we headed to the studio. Yeah, that's for when the I feel first like time we ever we had the entire group in the new studio for them to see it. All of us, most of us, uh, seeing it for the very, very, very first time, but definitely the first time with all of us together. We're not going to talk too much about that. That's for another time, hopefully soon. Uh, but were you guys were you guys impressed? Yeah. It's gigantic. It's massive. It's crazy. I, well, well, I mean, I think we should. I don't want to talk too much about it, Tim. But like, just let's just say, say that whatever, it's, say whatever it, you guys want to say. Not, I'm not trying to hold people back. It is not done. Like, yeah, we just have to put that out there because still, people it's might still being developed. Yeah, <laughs> people might expect this in there in two weeks or something like that. No, so no it is way. like 40, 50 percent done or something like that. By the way, yeah. it looks. But it is massive. 
I loved having Tim and Nick just and Kevin sort of say, this is what this is going to be. This is that. Look at this gigantic space. It is it was overwhelming in the best way possible. It was yeah, a special me, it was, moment. It, it, yeah, it was incredible to have everybody there and talk about it, right? And I think that was the thing on the outside when we were waiting for everybody to get there. And I was eating one of Tim's tacos. Uh, Mike asked me, you know, like, you know, what is this like for you or whatever? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, going in here, showing off this space or whatever. And it was that idea of like, oh, I don't know. That's cool. I'm excited for you guys to see it. I've seen it before, obviously, yada, yada, yada. But walking in there and then seeing where we're at right now, which is still, you know, the framing of walls and the layout of where things will be mm -hmm. and things spray painted on the ground to indicate space or whatever. That's when I got choked up and we were walking around you have everyone in there and we are so small <laughs> you know what i mean it's weird to have no. the entire company minus barrett who is sick uh you know in this space and have it not even remotely be taken up by us we're not so crazy and to yeah. clarify it is tall enough to have a basketball hoop in there so for it chat i know y'all were wondering that it is definitely tall enough to get some buckets in I do. I will say um, that I was disappointed that we didn't get Barrett in there for, by one of those little iPad Segway devices that he could control remotely. So maybe that's something we'll do next time. Uh, sure. But it was awesome. I know I can. I, Kevin can probably chime in as well. See, having everyone see the fruits of this this project that's been on our plates for the last two and a half years, roughly. Does that sound right? Two years. Yeah, totally. And I was I was talking to Snowbike Mike in the morning. He's like, "How you feeling, big dog?" And I'm like, "I'm nervous. I'm legitimately nervous. Like I was." I found myself being a little bit more like um, on edge than normal. And he was like, what's going on? I was like, I don't know, man. I think it's like everyone's kind of seeing the space for the first time. And I'm like, it's just kind of weird, right? It's like, I hope everyone likes it. I hope everyone's like, this is going to be cool and looks forward to it. And uh, I think everyone did. At least if you didn't, you hit it very, very, very well. Mike, I want to hear, I want to hear your thoughts. Tim, this was one of the most inspiring and heartwarming moments of my life to be surrounded by this team and being able to see the space that we will be in together and creating incredible stuff in the future. I mean, walking in, it was breathtaking. It was one of those of like, wow, you talk about it with Tim, Nick, Kevin, and you kind of guesstimate what this is going to be, but it is totally different than that. It is incredible. And so, so much fun to be down there, to see the space, to think of, what the future is going to hold, right? Greg looked at me and goes, you do whatever you want, Mike. And to like, think about, oh man, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. This is what I want to see was really, really special. And so that was a, a, a big moment there. I think this and the dinner were the two moments where I was like, man, this is my family. This is my team that I want to be around every single day. And I want to do the coolest stuff with. Last thing that we went out and had a big team dinner. First time, all of us together. It was fantastic. Got some pizza, mm -hmm. got some oh. pasta. Got some oh, we got a lot, Tim. A lot of food. Too much food. We all we recommend Fiorella. Exactly. It's always on the list of things to do when you hit up SF. Amazing place. But yeah, when it was like, oh yeah, we're you know we're gonna have seventeen people. Like, all right, cool. You know, this is the menu usually for twenty. I'm like, yeah. let it ride. And then Barrett dropped. <laughs> when Met Met Alyssa dropped, and it was like, all right, food is uh, stacking up. And we were. I had forgotten about the uh, chicken course when it was like, oh man, at yeah, least so, after these pastas, it's over. And the waiter yeah. was like, no, it's not. We're like, oh, no. and, full and chickens. I was full after the pizza course. I just yeah. want everyone to know I had eaten all the meatballs, which your mother in law kind of, it was fascinating watching her watch me eat because she was like, is he going to share like those meatballs? <laughs> no, they don't. And she was, it was like watching a wild animal eat for the first time. I was just like, these meatballs are so fucking good. And finally, she like, she like nudged Jen and Jen asked me like, Hey, could, could you maybe save one of those meatballs for my mom? And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. But also if she doesn't eat the whole meatball. Like could kick over the rest, like over. whatever's Let left over, over the meatball. Yeah, for sure. I did for not sure. know there were two pastas coming. And then I look over at Mike, I see Snowbike Mike and he, he's a little, whatever he is. And I'm drunk. And I'm like, Mike, there's two pastas, two pastas coming. And for the rest of the time, he just kept going like this, Nick too, two pastas coming. I'm like, there's two pastas coming. What's up? I, Andy? From I also, Hanson. I also want to point out that, this was kind of a big moment for me as an employee at Kind of Funny because while we are all in person, I no longer was the pickiest eater in the company um, because they brought out the meatballs. They brought out the meatballs and they also brought out these fried like balls of rice and arancinis 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 yeah. but but what's inside rice and it's like corn, corn maybe? No, we still corn. Are. 
some corn, yes. corn and cheese. Yeah. So Blessing <laughs> and Roger are immediately intrigued and like, I don't know what this is, but I'm starving. So I'm going to just fucking whatever. I'll dip it in this thing and take a bite. And they're eating it. And I'm looking at Mike the whole time. And Mike's looking at them. And they kind of have this face of, uh, I don't know if I like it. I don't hate it, though. Like, it's definitely not bad. And they're like, Mike, you want one? And immediately he's like, no, 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 no. I'm good. You all were not, you know, you you all did not convince me in any way to want to try that. And then I kind of looked around and then Tim goes, Andy, how does it feel to no longer be the, <laughs> the pickiest person in the company? And it felt amazing because... Well, I mean, it felt even better after that because then Mike and I went to town on the meatballs. We went to fucking town, dude. Meanwhile, 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 me, Kevin, and Greg on the other side are snorting these fucking destroying these these kids' corn balls, whatever they are. Like, they're so good. Aaron Cheney are Italian rice balls that are stuffed coated with breadcrumbs and deep fried and are staple of Sicilian cuisine. Aaron Cheney's are stuffed with sweet corn, smoked mozzarella, and fontina on tarragon Meyer lemon ricotta. This is that Fiorella? That's how they do it. No, real talk, Fiorella might be one of the best, if not the best, Italian restaurants that I've been to in okay. San Francisco. It's really freaking good. Yeah. And I did not know there was two pastas and a chicken coming. I ate a lot of pepperoni <laughs> pizza yeah. and yeah. a lot of those yeah. arancinis. That's the thing, I, man. Yeah, that was a mistake. Well, first I, off, I was... we followed the Pepperoni Diplomacy Act, which Roger yes. didn't even know about, uh, which is mm-hmm. kind of weird because I thought he watched uh, anything that we do. Oh, I thought he was a big um, fan. That was one of the things he put on his resume. He's never seen an episode of our show. Part of his employment. Uh, kind of wild, yeah. But uh, we did follow the Pepperoni Diplomacy Wait. Act of 2019, and there were many, many slices mm-hmm. of pepperoni eaten. And I uh, couldn't stop eating the damn things. And then they yeah, brought out good. one. They brought out the other one brought that had like the other one. Oh my god! They brought out the other one that had like the full kind of tomatoes on it with the, yeah. the yeah. ricotta Margarita cheese style. in the middle, and you gotta. Uh, the lady was like, "You gotta spread it." But Roger, I've never bro. seen. Roger ruined it. I've oh, never so seen. <laughs> I've Roger never seen so a, anxious. I've never seen a more neurotic, scared <laughs> act in my life. Of Roger, like. Kind of start like should I should I and she's like yeah go for it you you mix it in like that's what the lady said so he starts like mixing and not feeling comfortable for one second in doing it and he's looking around and, he, and I'm like wow they're not mixing it over there he's like I know like are we doing it <laughs> and he just looks it's pure fear it is pure fear that he has right now I mean, my favorite thing is that Mike keeps on doubling down on every fear that I've had this weekend every fear I've had this weekend he's like no you're wrong and you're fucking up and you're ruining it at all like I I'm at one point i i uh i texted nick and i have a new phone and it auto- it automatically like texted like instead of lol it texted like google or some dumb shit and mm. then it said i sent it to nick and then i said it i was like yo mike i just fucking sent this to nick that's crazy and he's like you ruined it you ruined your relationship with him it's over for you <laughs> like, he was dead serious. what's amazing like, about was- that is like it's like you guys have never seen or heard of anything we've done before. We used to tape white claws to our hands for charity stream for children. This is the kind of organization you're hanging out with. There's no such thing as ruining anything. We used to refer to ourselves as the garbage trucks on fire slowly rolling down the street. You are the assholes, you and Greg. We see, I know, yeah, you're acting all this past yeah. tense stuff. <laughs> I mean, they yeah, call each other the asshole. <laughs> so, uh, real quick, I want to add one more little anecdotal story that happened right before we left for the studio because it's like as soon as somebody gets hired for this company they stop watching the content and it makes total total sense but what's really funny is when this happens and you have a fucking watched yeah sure well it when you get a 50 pound turtle in your house and one of the people don't know and you're like oh hey mike come look at boris and the Raj is like what's boris (laughs) and i'm like oh he's the 50 pound turtle he's like oh yeah all right the 50 pound turtle and i'm like no there's He's right there. He you not, have you not and heard it's of like, this? Holy <laughs> shit. He had no idea at that point. He had no, no idea. And then all of a sudden, he's just confronted with a turtle that is very, very big. <laughs> And it's vicious. very scary for me. I thought it was uh, just I th- I thought you were just saying that there was like turtles in San Francisco, like walking the fuck around. No, and we like have that's coyotes, why I was though. Yeah, you gotta be careful with the coyotes walking around because they'll pick up Gia. Oh, we just discovered what creatures live in San Francisco. <laughs> Don't you worry. Oh, that's a fun story. I'd like to tell my perspective on that first. But um, before this happens, obviously, Roger, as the person yeah. who is oblivious to most of the stuff that goes on in this company, welcome. You don't have to worry about it. Um, I I'll tell you guys something right now. I'm you know I'm 41 years old. I consider myself for the most part an adult, and you would think that I would like learn from life's little lessons, right? Namely. 
I had my comedy shows happening and obviously uh, we were all having dinner and I, I was able to make it to my late show, but I had to skip my early show. So I was in a little bit of a hurry to to, to leave and, and get to my late show um, just to go help out and set some stuff up. And Roger goes, hey, Nick, there's a lot of pizza left over. And he pointed to the boxes that the, the service staff had nicely kind of wrapped up all these pizzas. And I'm not lying. There was like five or six boxes of pizza that we have left over. And he goes, do you do you want to take some of that home with you? And I'm thinking to myself, this is this is pre drunk, maybe a little drunk. I'm like, no, I'm going to be good tonight, Tim. I'm going to be healthy tonight. I am not taking this pizza home. And then I text Roger at 11 o'clock at night. And I'm like, that was the stupidest fucking decision I could have. I should have loaded the trunk of my car with all that pizza because it would be it would oh, go down yeah. so hard right now. You would have been so king, the king hard. of the comedy club if you were like, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the boat show. Come to my trunk. <laughs> I got pizza. Oh, fuck <laughs> those people. I was going to just Yo. bring it home with me and hang out and just eat it by myself. The Getty's family ate well this weekend. No, we I took it all home. So all glad you did. It. All right. <laughs> when they, were, they came out so hopeful when they saw shit. we were tapping out on everything and they had all these boxes and they started boxing and I was like, cool. And I'm like, I am not. Maybe Jen's mom's visiting. We are not going to eat leftover pizza. I'm like, I, we got to get out of here. Uh, so I want to point out nothing. I was like, I'm not even bothering. Someone will take it or deal with it. I want to point Andy. out one of my favorite moments of the night um, because Blessing only really got to experience cool greg for about three months and then the pandemic hit mm -hmm. roger had never really experienced cool greg yeah. mike has you know here and there but it's been a long time and cool greg was there the whole time and i missed the hell out of him and he was fantastic and it was just great to kind of hang and talk with him again but um what the funniest moment of that night for me was cool greg just walking up to tim and we're in this we're in the back of fiorella and there are stairs in the back that lead to somewhat of like maybe a roof or a second story no and he goes hey hey tim you, you think they're cool if i smoke up there <laughs> and it's obviously that nobody's up there like you're not supposed to be up there and tim is like uh i mean i don't i don't know like tim just is looking for a way to say no without saying no and he's like yeah because like it doesn't look like i'm supposed to be up there but it doesn't look like it's bad if I do go up there. And Tim is like, yeah, I don't know. And they're having this funny back and forth and I'm just cracking up. We're all dying listening to it. And then the teacher in the room, uh, Greg Miller, starts to walk by and, and Cool Greg's there talking to Tim. Yeah, because it's smoking. And he sees Cool Greg, hey, Mizzou! <laughs> just walks away. <laughs> just walks away. And it was the funniest fucking thing I've ever experienced with Cool Greg. And he makes cool me laugh all the time. Cool Greg was my favorite part of that at, of that night at dinner because mm -hmm. there were multiple times where I was like, I've missed you so much and you're the funniest person I know, like intentionally and unintentionally. Where yeah. that happened, there was also the thing where he had found a basketball hoop oh, garbage boy. can out on the street with a basketball well, in that's it. When the curse, that's and when he had, the curse started. Just and that's when the out. curse started, which is an entire, entirely different story that plays yeah. heavily into this weekend. <laughs> We're we not even day one. We're not even done with day one, guys. Hold on. We don't even know that there's a curse coming because here at the <laughs> dinner is when the plans finally came out. Where the whole weeks leading up to this, Kevin Coelho has plans been trying to get us all. I hit up everyone yeah, on Slack beforehand. No. No, 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 here, check this out, check this out. No, I mean, like, they actually came to fruition because for weeks leading up to this, it has been, hey, let's go to Six Flags and then let's go to Top Golf. And there had been a lot of different plans being thrown out there. But finally, this was where Kevin is really, really trying to get me to go to Six Flags. And I decide yes. And then Blessing's like, Tim, Tim and Blessing are both like, Andy's going? Shit, Blessing, you're going? Tim, you're going? Oh, shit. Let's all go yeah. to Six you Flags. Like, if you all say yes, I'm down the for this. And yeah. to be yeah. clear, right up to this point, I was very much refusing to go to Six Flags because Kevin put <laughs> me too. <laughs> Kevin put up the whole schedule of the mm -hmm. weekend activities, and I was like, "Cool, Friday, I'm for sure gonna hang out. Saturday, they're doing <clears throat> they're doing Six Flags and Top Golf. Ah, uh, that seems like a lie. And I'm gonna see them on Sunday for brunch and a bunch of shit. I'm just gonna take Saturday off, have that time to myself to do birthday shit or whatever, and then I'll hang out on, on Sunday again, and then maybe on Monday too. Uh, but yeah, it was during that dinner. It was after Andy was like, I'm gonna go. And then Tim was like, fuck, if Andy's going, I'm going. When Tim said that, I was like, shoot. And then it was it was Roger who looked at me and was like, you're not gonna see me again forever. Aaron, I don't Jesus. live here. This is your one time mm -hmm. to see me and mm -hmm. hang out with me. And I was like, shit. All right, I'm gonna go to Six Flags too. Now, started you agree to that, and you see the giddiness in Kevin's face across the table, right? He's getting all gassed up. He's on the website. And thankfully, Tim had to be the adult and step in and go, 
did you make reservations, Kevin? And Tim, you saved the day because Kevin was just buying tickets left and right at it's that scary. point. Scary. It was really scary at that point. <laughs> It all worked out. It all worked out. I want. I want to take over for the conversation now, just to set up <laughs> chapter two, and then I Wait, will no, hand no, it off to you guys. That, Wait, I wanna, I want to. Before we get out of there, I think there's things to close up on night one here, right? At yeah, Fiorella or whatever. I want to mention the curse, because we go. Yeah, we, uh, very important. A, a group goes out <laughs> like to curse. smoke cigarettes. Okay. Uh -huh. Cool. Greg sees a pile of trash, and in it he finds gold. He finds a little trash can that looks like a hoop with a net. And an actual basketball inside. And he's like, well, I'm going to take this from my room. And it's like, that's so cool. Cool, Greg, don't you also need a mirror? There's a full-length mirror that's just on its, that's like, I don't know, pr pr like put against the wall. Propped up. Yeah, propped up, thanks. And he's like, yeah, but like, I'm, I'm going to see if it's still there when we're leaving. And I'm like, all right. So we go right around the corner. We're hanging out. And all of a sudden, there's a, a, a gust of wind. And the... <laughs> The mirror mm. co collapses, and oh, oh my God, Roger no, just right. did, spends the next ten minutes freaking me out, being like, "Do do you guys? We just saw a mirror crash. Like, we just saw a mirror break. Like, we're cursed, aren't we? We're yeah, fucking cursed." Is like, Roger, shut the fuck up! Like, don't bring that energy here. Yeah, and then we're cursed for the next the entire for so long. Now, and before you get out of here, before we move into full-on curse territory and the shit you people have lived through, what I want to do is end on a happy note in terms of night one or whatever, uh, of what a big moment it was, you know, that, again, this is the first time we've all gathered together. This is the first time we've all been together as a company. But even locals, we haven't actually all been in the same room together in a long time. So the fact that my wife has been growing our child inside of her uh, is something that you all know is happening, but we don't talk about often because we don't have water cooler moments because we're only ever talking about anything on the show. And so personally getting to see everyone's reaction to a very pregnant Jen, which included Nick Scarpino, of course, being so excited to come over and try to feel my my son kick inside mm -hmm. my wife or whatever. That was, that, but the excitement was shared equally between the two parties that were in this, in this sure. situation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jen was so and happy. I don't want people to think that I beeline was like, I'm just going to put my hand on your stomach. There was a moment, though, where she was like, I really want you to feel this kid kicking. And I was like, I'm fucking in for this. So however long it takes, whatever you got to make this kid kick, I am in. And I got a shoulder cramp because I was like this. And she's yeah. like, you can change hands. And I'm like, that's a pro. That's a pro maneuver there. Yeah. Kind of went over here. Never felt the kid kick, though. Don't believe it's real. Yeah, he's a jerk like that. You know what I mean? It's yeah. the same thing when he starts really doing moves. I get and over then, there too. He'll slow down. I, I look on Instagram. Today I see he did Gia. a full on like fist, though. Like a, it doesn't matter. Oh, that's Sorry. terrifying. Uh, it's like, just like the conjuring with that with that water bed. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. My face. Like, great, Greg, I, no. I might have missed this. Did you just talk about Cool Greg? No. Say Cool Greg saying hi to Jen and the baby. Oh no, I forgot all about that. Dude, that was the like Nick Nick's excitement, amazing. Everyone's excitement, amazing. Uh Cool Greg coming over at the bar, fist bumping my wife, and then immediately bumping her belly, fist bumping her stomach to give my son the first ever in your utero fist bump. Fist bump. I was mm -hmm. like, that's amazing, cool, Greg. That is how you greet my child, and I appreciate you. <laughs> and then, yeah, on top of it, I shared with Kevin. I know I don't know if he's been showing it, or if that's just confidence monitor for us. Uh, at the end of the night, Gia was so stoked, obviously, to see uh, Jen that she came over and, yeah, read a Shel Silverstein poem into <laughs> Jen's belly, if you can show it again, Kevin. I'm just like, what's happening here? She just read uh, one of the Shel Silverstein uh, poems off of it. I thought that was so, so fucking touching. Oh, that's really cute. That's it's, awesome. Uh, I bet she got to fill the kid kick. No big deal. I'm not bitter. It's just I was promised kicking. You should be. Yeah. yeah. And I got be. a mild like grumble. And Jen sure. was trying. She was drinking water. Yeah, she was she chugging the water for a while trying to help you she, out. Yeah, she like sure. dabbed a little pepper into her mouth just to see if she could spice it up a little bit. I made that part up. She didn't do that. But uh, <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that day. that I think includes Friday. And this leads you now to the cursed Split children. Friday to an extent. Because it doesn't at all. Yeah, I wish we it going, did. But instead of that, <laughs> can I say Let that? Let me tell you about our sponsors. Yeah. There you go. This podcast is brought to you by HelloFresh. What is HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. Skip the trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. There's something for everyone to enjoy with all recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. Enjoy a wide variety of easy, delicious options for three meals a day, plus 
every snack and special treat in between with HelloFresh Market. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Greg. I love to cook, and one of the things that got me started on cooking was these kind of packages, right? HelloFresh sends you the pre-measured ingredients, you get the instructions, you pick ahead of time what sounds good, you don't have to think on the day of, you just go straight down the checklist, you make something good, and you learn how to cook. You learn new methods, that's why I love it. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, you can go to HelloFresh.com slash morning14 and use the code morning14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash morning14 and use the code morning14 for up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Our next sponsor, why it's Babbel. This summer, get the most out of your travels abroad by learning the language of the destination you're going to with Babbel, the number one selling language learning app. From ordering in restaurants or asking for directions to gaining a deeper understanding of the culture, Babbel makes the whole process of learning a new language addictively fun and easy with bite-sized lessons you can actually use in the real world. Babbel is a can't-miss travel essential. I'm not even traveling with it. Instead, uh, Jen's mom uh, from the only, uh, the one and only Quebec coming down here. I've been using Babbel. I signed up for Babbel. I'm going to see if I can talk to her a little bit more in French than usual because I usually can't, but I've been doing Babbel because unlike the infamous language classes you took in high school, Babbel designs their course with practical real world conversations in mind. Things you'll get to use in everyday life. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. Right now, when you purchase a three month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to babbel.com and use the promo code MORNING. That's B A B B E L.com, code MORNING, for an extra three months. And our final sponsor of the day is stamps.com. Ladies and gentlemen, are you still going to the post office, still paying full price for postage? Well, thanks to stamps.com, you don't have to anymore. Mail and ship anytime, anywhere, right from your computer. Send letters, ship packages, and pay less, a lot less, with discounted rates from UPS, USPS, and more. Of course, when we were still in the office, one and only Joey Noel was using this to mail out all sorts of stuff for Patreon. We love stamps.com. Stamps.com brings the services of the United States Postal Service and UPS right to your computer. It's a must have for any business, whether you're a small office sending invoices, a side hustle Etsy shop, shipping out orders, or just navigating this hybrid work life. Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Stop wasting time going to the post office and instead go to stamps.com. There's no risk. And with our promo code kind of funny, all one word, you get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale, no long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone in the top of, at the top of the homepage and type in kind of funny. That's stamps.com promo code kind of funny stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. And now what do you got, Nick? I wake up to this text from Snowbike Mike. <laughs> <laughs> And I have to wait. Hold on. Hold on. No, 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 don't. No, no, no. It's not. It's it's. This is all I read. Saturday, 1103 a.m. You are never, never going to believe what happened last night. The (laughs) ultimate Kevin situation. And then he it's skull and crossbone, skull and crossbone. And I'm like, I cannot wait. I had to wait all day to hear this story of what happened the night prior. But it was fucking worth it. And also, I wasn't really aware of anything that was happening because I wasn't getting the Slack notifications. And I thought whatever up Operation Dumbo Drop was, I thought that Slack channel was the great Greg Chase. Had it all confused. (laughs) Had no idea that the later on you all are like, oh, we're going to go see this movie. And I'm like, what movie y'all talking about? Damn, I wasn't invited. And then later on, I see that I'm in a Slack channel that has all of this shit scheduled out. And I saw none of it. Remember when I was like, hey, everyone, what do we call this thing? I remember, Kev. And I wasn't Nick on was the show. only one that was up. It was a sat. It was a Friday morning <laughs> meeting. Or Monday morning. Meeting. It was. It was the, one, of the, one of the rare meeting. times that I'm like, I threw something out there as a joke and it stuck. And I'm like, we should have known. We should have known. It may not have, to do that. It may have been the one that Roger texted me like, are you coming to this? I was like, oh, there's a meeting. Yeah, I don't think Andy was there. Yeah. Anyway. All right, folks, so, let's so everybody buckle up. Hold on, hold yeah. on. So, so we leave, we leave Fiorella. We go to another bar because that's how we, how we yeah. do. Uh-huh. Nick was gone. Uh-huh. Greg and Jen went home. It, it's the, it's the party people at this point. Of course, we lose Andy at, at some point, uh, but we're there continuing to drink as, as long as we possibly can. I'm sure Mike's partaking in some fucking 
a rat in some bro. form, right? And his and, his eyes were the reddest I've ever seen a man's eyes, and I didn't, I didn't feel like that's important. I was watching Mike drift out of existence slowly throughout that <laughs> day. <laughs> like the only guy into that day, the more I was like, Mike, are you what? are you good, bro? Are you what, here? What, what, what that was crazy is that like nobody noticed Mike go up the stairs that Cool Greg was looking at <laughs> and, and the quietly cool Greg. smoke half a tarantula yeah. leg. Exactly. So yeah. so it's go. It's time to go home, and it probably was time to go home hours before this. Right? We're all fucking wasted, including blessed. God bless you. I love you so much. But we end up getting this Uber, and without getting into the details, this is one of those Ubers from hell where there is multiple arguments oh, and weird, lar- long discussions going on. This poor, poor Uber driver just having to listen to me, bless Cool Greg and Gia yell at each other way too fucking loudly. It is God knows what time. Let's just say it's 1 a.m. Maybe, maybe midnight. Doesn't matter. We get home and I'm like, Thank God today is over. It was yeah. so much fun. Great day it long, is time man. to get in bed. We have to. We have an early morning because we're all about to go to Six Flags. We committed to this, so I want to make sure I get a good rest. I don't want to be hungover. I want to be ready to go. This is going to be a great night. And I close my eyes and I fall asleep. Except that's not what happened because I got to call wait, out wait, Joey wait. Noel. Now Mike. let's cut. Let's cut to the other <laughs> car because the <laughs> Uber ride. Like, like, the Uber, Uber ride. Right. Uber Uber right. right. Uber right. Uber right. It was <laughs> phenomenal. Phenomenal. Go ahead. Phenomenal, so Kevin. Let me take it over. Let's buckle up. Everybody, sprinkle in when you have your moments. Our Uber on the opposite side was the fun Uber because. I was high off the arachnid, and I found out that Roger had never seen, never seen, this is the end. And he was like, Mike, you are, you would totally watch those kind of movies. And I was like, Roger, I love those kind of comedy movies. And he said, Mike, I've never seen this is the end. So what did I do? I bought it on Amazon Prime Video, turned it on in the back of the Uber for me That's and Roger to watch. Right. And he That's starts shoutcasting on mute what Seth Rogen's doing. <laughs> So I was a little stony baloney. I was a little stony. He buys it on the wrong account and is like, oh no, my ex girlfriend's going to hit me up. (laughs) (laughs) She'll call me. She'll be all right. And then, you know what I mean? A little 399 judge. He plays this movie, but with the audio muted, and then just decides he's going to fill in Roger on everything that's happening. But he's not explaining the jokes, he's just kind of explaining. Everything that's happening. Oh, man. The general premise of what's going on. Guys. Exactly. The situation with that. I felt self-conscious of playing the movie extra loud where only me and Roger can watch it. So I thought, I'll just tell Roger what's <laughs> happening in the movie. It'll be fine. Fair enough. What is that? Very better? smart. All very smart decisions. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So we, we have a great ride home. Everybody's gassed up. What do we do? We're the Fortnite crew. So we're like, let's play Fortnite. Because I told you all, Kevin decked out our rooms. And when I say decked out... I had a computer. I had an Xbox in my room. Roger had a PS4. Joey's got her room. Kevin's got his situation. We are gassed up to play Fortnite, right? And so we all go to our rooms. Andy Cortez? Um, While Kevin is setting all this up for you, I'm playing Valorant in the other Discord. Mm -hmm. And Snowback Mike pops in and says, guys... I'm about to fucking I'm about to fucking download Valorant on this PC. We're gonna get some fucking games in, boys. Let's go. Oh Every time Mike, Mike, the Mike, the Mike, the Mike like, double teaming. I know. The mic goes out and we never hear from Mike again. You guys, <laughs> never hear from, you guys no. what you don't understand no. is the curse is in full effect at this point. So okay. we get to no. the house and But if I may, if I may before that, if you may, this yeah. is very much the mic. This is a mic situation because Andy, you'll attest. Nine out of ten times, Snowbike Mike, never once he leaves back. the Discord, never comes back. And he never says bye. He goes, I'll be right back. The mic mutes. <laughs> that is the last you ever hear from him. For the, the rest mic of the was night. muted. He didn't leave. The mic just no, muted. I don't know. He just mutes the mic so, and mm-hmm. goes away. I, I had so, set this up two days ago. I turned on yep. all the PS4, or the PS4 and the Xbox and made sure they had updated. I thought I had updated the game. There's some little controversy there. Uh, I I put the headphones to charge. And I'm like, oh, it. we're gonna be ready to rock and <laughs> roll. Like I don't know what we're, controversy there is. It just wasn't. We are ready to <laughs> rock and roll. And so I'm sitting down, and I don't have any sound out of my headphones. Kevin, you can hear Kevin. He's pitter pattering upstairs to downstairs. <laughs> He's helping everyone. Right? Oh, your headphones aren't working. Plug this in. Oh, your game isn't uploaded. All uploaded. Right? Kevin's moving, Kevin's in shaking boxes, and baking. in closets, exactly. pulling he, shit out everywhere. He's doing it's it all. He's shocking. doing the Kevin. 
And like all of a sudden, a. me, Joey, and Kevin are in a lobby, and I'm just typing in the general chat, just ready up, let's do this, I don't need sound, right? And Kevin's like, oh no, I got you, right? So Kevin, bless his heart, is doing everything. He's got us all set up. And all of a sudden, everybody comes into my room, and Kevin's beautiful dog, he has an incredible dog, Cecil, who is just so great, comes into the room, and lays down at Kevin's feet and starts to move his head all around Kevin's feet, which draws my stony baloney eyes to it. And they go, man, Kevin, that's a beautiful dog, but why is its face yellow? And right as I say yellow, everybody looks down and we are smacked with the most intense, <laughs> putrid, rotten, stinking smell you have ever smelled in your entire life. It smacks us like an SUV in a car crash. All it's of a horrible. sudden, it becomes panic mode, right? Of like, Terrible. oh shit, your dog just got sprayed by a skunk, Kevin, and we don't know what to do. Kevin runs outside with the dog. Me, Joey, and Roger are now laughing our asses off while trying to open frantic windows because we cannot breathe. Because I, I promise you, everybody listening out there, imagine the most rancid, hot, temperature-wise hot, hot, smelling, so hot. rotten piss you could ever imagine. That is now in my room where I'm supposed to stay for the weekend all over the floor. You can see it in puddles on the floor. And I look at Joey and she's laughing. Roger's laughing. I'm panicking to open the door before I vomit. And I can hear Kevin. Kevin, instead of keeping the dog outside, brings it upstairs. So now we got steps upstairs with the dog. I'm cleaning downstairs. And the skunk was in. And skunk got us. The skunk got, got us, y'all. It was... A disaster. It was Roger. One of the worst we were. La had. We did. La we laughed for like a solid minute and a half, and then all of a sudden, the reality of what had just happened <laughs> sunk yeah. in, and we were like, "Oh fuck! What are we supposed to do?" Roger's googling things. <laughs> we're spraying whatever cleaning stuff we can find on the floor. Mm -hmm. I like. What did we? Oh, we put like we have baking soda on the floor. I'm lighting all 73 of the candles I have in my arsenal to try and make any of this smell go away. And is it's it working a disaster. At all? No, it is no, not absolutely working. not. It's down the hallway, Greg, like the whole main hallway. You can smell it. And I looked at Joey. I looked at Joey. I go, Joey, unfortunately we can't stay here and you have to send us somewhere. Like we need to go somewhere else because it's in my room i can't do this and yeah. she looks at us and she she felt bad she goes i got you guys don't worry i'll reach out to tim now and so i'm so i'm I, stony <laughs> i grab my phone and i have a group chat left over with tim and gia from last year <laughs> when we all lived together and i was like I, is there any chance that you guys are up right now now, just being really cool and tim made the cardinal mistake of texting me back and saying yes so poor no. tim i don't know what was happening on your side where you if you were just about to In fall bed, asleep literally about to fall asleep yeah but like oh. I, I just the curse i knew something was going on <laughs> so i called the tim and i was like hey i have to send roger and mike to you right now there was a skunk incident don't worry about it i'm sending them in an uber and tim bless his soul was like we got it <laughs> and so I hear this phone call and like the way Joey's saying it to me right to us right now makes it sound like, oh, yeah, they got scum. They're going to come over or whatever. Oh, no, I'm sure it, it was didn't way sound more like panicky. That. It was panic. I, I just hear, hey, uh, I, I, I need to send Roger and, and, and Mike to you like now. Like, I'm just going to put him in an Uber. I'm going to get him to you now. And I'm just like, what the fuck is happening? And she's like, dude, they, they got skunked. Everything skunked. Uh, Kevin's every floor is skunked. There's just skunk everywhere. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Hey, cool. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Just send him. Like five minutes later, like it was just so quick. I go downstairs to open the door and I keep in mind, it's really late at this point and we have Moose and Moose is already a handful. And like, he, he needs to like meet people at the door, get used to them being there. There's a whole process, right? We didn't have time for that process. None of that happened. So Moose is just up there freaking the fuck out. Spoilers all night because he just knows there are people in our house. Right. And I walk outside. And this Wait, Uber is this the video up. of Cecil getting skunked? This is the video. You can't see him actually get skunked, but you can see Cecil up here by the hot tub being like, what's yeah. that? And then he runs over and then runs back and is just rubbing his head on the floor because he just, there it is. Oh, what's that? Oh, no. Skunked. Skunk? Oh. And there he is. Shit. Oh, like, oh, something's oh, wrong. Oh, fucking shit. Something's oh, no. Wrong. 
And then he's rubbing nobody, on the He's like, nobody told me this could happen. Nobody told me this was a oh, thing. No I don't think so he's ever weird. seen a skunk before. Oh, God. Wow. So depressing. Uh, so, man, that poor dog. The only thing sadder than seeing this poor dog is seeing Mike and Roger emerge from this Uber. And I swear to God, I, I might be wrong about this, but I have this image etched in my mind of the two of them walking out, which is t-shirts and it looked like just me undies. Like they were in just pure Dude, pajama mode where like I can't imagine ever seeing these two outside wearing the clothes they're wearing, tail between their legs. They just wanted to go to sleep. They were just so sad and they were just like Hey, hey, Tim, sorry about this. And I was just like, what the fuck is our lives right now? Dude, we Tim, get them up. They go to bed. What's up, Kev? I saw the opposite happen i can't i was running up and down trying to solve literally both problems because yes i brought cecil into that upstairs house because i was planning to th throw him in the uh yeah oh i'm sorry yes, real quick too one of the things i had heard the next or uh, two days later at the barbecue right uh was that you had initially run up to paula and thought a raccoon had peed on cecil yeah i mean it's one of those <laughs> things that like it did not smell like a skunk at first it sure. smelled weird it smelled visceral oh, yeah. And, sure. and hot. It smelled, and it looked like piss too. It was yellow. I didn't know skunks made yeah. yellow spray. I think Did you yeah, for think, sure. Yeah, I think when it's that. No, close no, no. That, this isn't me yeah. making fun of you, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just I, 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 I know that moment of panic where something's happening. And you jump to this conclusion, and then yeah. the slow realization that it's even worse than that. Yeah. So I came in, ran upstairs, woke Paula up because she had just like gone to bed and was falling asleep. And then I, I'm, I'm. She like takes and takes him into the shower and starts giving him a shower to get it off. And I keep running up and down trying to treat the floors to try to, like, minimize this smell, right? And one of those yeah. times I run down, all I see is at the end of a long hallway, Joey standing at the doorway, like, kind of ushering uh, Roger and Mike out and being like, guys, it's going to be okay. The Uber's right there. Just go. Everything is going to be better when you get there. <laughs> and it's just like, I don't think I'm ever going to forget that moment because it was the like... It was so traumatic looking for them, and I felt the awful. energy of this evacuation like smacks of like uh, Jor El and Lara putting Kal El in a rocket. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just like, like oh, come on, fuck, go away. <laughs> it's over. We need to get out of here. We're <laughs> Joey you. taking these boys, it's putting them into this thing, and sending them away. My dorm uh, room was closed. My room was fine, but uh, I was awesome. not I'm about to happy. speak for that. Yeah, I, was, I was up till about, and this is probably the end of my house in this saga. But I was up to about three thirty. Just trying, like I drove to Walgreens, got some Nature's Miracle, sprayed that all over the floors, mopped three different times, and like the smells is the smells gone now, it, but it did unfortunately stick for the whole weekend. It was that so, thing where like I woke up to it and didn't know any of this right because I was entertaining Jen's or my mother-in-law, uh, and so like when you put on Slack at ten eighteen in the morning, hey guys, last night Cecil got skunked and it's bad. My third floor, <laughs> second floor, and back backyard got devastated. The backyard reeks. Unfortunately, I don't think having a barbecue is the best idea. I'm really sorry, guys. That when I read that, I was like, I could feel it. I could I knew how much you were looking forward to having people over for this fourth of July barbecue on Sunday. I could feel your spirits broken. And I was like, if he's sending up the white flag for a Sunday barbecue at Saturday at 10 in the morning, that house is fucked. <laughs> So for me and Roger, we arrive at Tim's house and Tim gives us the rundown of Moose and we were not prepared for that, right? We walk in there and Roger is laying in the living room on a blow up mattress. I'm in Gia's office and that dog is going ballistic, just yeah. absolutely wants to rip somebody's head off so loud. And you can hear Jim and Tia first. Jim and uh, Gia, Tim and Gia first. Moose, calm down. It's going to be all right. And then he settles for three minutes. And then he hears something or smells us and he's back, right? And it just lasted for hours to the point where I was laying in the bed and I was like, I cannot move or else this dog is going to wake up and we're going to force poor Tim to stay up all night long. Roger, tell me. Uh, it was, it was, the thing is, it wasn't Gia. It was just Tim. And I was like, oh, Gia's mad. But she was just sleeping. She was oh, just she, sleeping. I find Gia out was later. She, the fuck out. <laughs> she was just she like, this is Tim's problem. Out. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was just so sad hearing the yip, 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 yip. And then moose, moose, <laughs> come on, man. Like the pleading, the, uh, the begging to moose. And I, the thing is in the beginning of, of the, of the incident, when we came in, we're like, hey, like, do we smell? And then, and then Tim's like, no, you don't smell. We walk in. He's like, 
right, you smell a little bit. Like you smell a little <laughs> bit. And I couldn't figure out where the fuck this smell was coming from because we we stripped. We we took we changed our clothes completely. <laughs> we completely like I was it's working. Mike and still it's still like Mike and Roger like washing each other in a tomato bag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dewousing each we, other. We completely like changed our clothes head to toe. Like I wore different shoes that I wore today. Like it was wild. And I was like, where the fuck is this smell coming from? And I I, I laid down in this very comfortable air mattress, by the way, I should say. And uh, I'm laying down. I'm like, I still smell it. It was from my mask that was in my room down the hallway. And it, it absorbed it in the yeah. whatever, 30 minutes that we were in there. Uh-huh. That's how potent it was. God. It's It fucking, was wild. Fucking moose. Just... <laughs> Like all crazy. fucking night sticking his nose oh, in the door. Does he think you were like, like an animal? I don't know yeah, what the hell was happening, man. But it, it was such a disaster. So we wake up the next morning. I literally essentially wake up. Uh, well, I never slept, but <laughs> I woke up for the final time kind of being there. And I open the door. And the first thing I see is Kevin walking up my stairs. Kevin picked us up like that. our, our Didn't upset father. Didn't see Kevin just in my house. But <laughs> <laughs> lo and behold, he was. Well, so I the next day I wake up at like, I don't know, 8 a.m. And I go to my local uh, pet store. And, of course, they're all sold. No, they're closed. They don't open for another 15 minutes. And I'm like, well, I'll go to another pet store, uh, see what they got there. And they're all out of skunk stuff. So it's like, great. But I'm I I'm, I'm close to Tim, like it wouldn't be crazy to like swing by and pick up the boys. So I hit him up, and they're like, "Yeah, we're ready." I mean, like this is what we said game time was. Even though we had a horrible night, we're ready to go. So I pick them up, and then I'm like, "Hey guys, now the pet place is open, so I'm gonna swing by there, get the stuff." They grab some. Don't nod your head, Tim. They grab some Starbucks. All right, the Starbucks. Mike needed the Starbucks. He was on on the edge of death's door. Which yeah, he will he continue he that chat for, for, for the next maybe Absolutely. nine hours. <laughs> yeah. Which, by the way, the night prior, the night prior, game time is decided, and me and Blessing look at each other and go, "That's uh, I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to." It was ten like, a.m. Right? That I don't want to get going time. at ten a.m. to go to Six Flags. Like, yeah, but they open I, at I, eleven. I if you don't get sleep. there when they open. There, you're gonna have a giant you're line. Which, line. Spoilers. <laughs> we still we did. Get a giant, well, it's because we didn't get there when we opened. We were 45 minutes late. Go ahead. Sorry, this is where I have to hit the eject button on myself. I love you all. This was an amazing weekend. I, I love these stories. I'm so glad you're all here sharing them. Uh, audience, I've been uh, given an incredible opportunity uh, to go host something for Skybound Expo that may or may not have to do with the Invincible animated series. So I have to go record that. You can see it Sunday, July 18th. I can't wait to hear the rest of this fucking podcast that I assume only has another two and a half hours. Seeing as how you're now to Saturday morning. But I can't wait uh, to hear how much I really like my ribs. But I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, Bye. Mike, Mike, do you want to put your camera on? or? Sure, I can turn my camera on. Give me one second. Hit it, hit it. Okay. So you pick up the boys. So I yeah. pick up the boys. We go back to my house, um, and then we go to pick up Blessing. We pick up Blessing. Things are pretty smooth, although we are late on our, our like departure time. I get a text. We go to I think we go to Mickey D's, and I get a text from uh tim being like hey what are you guys leaving soon and it's like yeah like right like right as, as soon as we leave mickey d is like we're gonna be out of here uh also and- can we just like bring attention to the fact that this is now their second mickey d's in the course of what <laughs> 24 hours <laughs> you know, yeah, you guys. This is a place of judgment judgment like that all i'm right? not asking questions like that today tim those questions i would like that stricken from we had a record, rough so night we had a rough way, 24 you know what i mean Kevin picked me up and it felt like I was meeting people who just went through a thing. Cause at this point I didn't know, I didn't know the details of what happened. All I, all I had was the Slack message from Kevin being like, Hey, uh, July 4th barbecues canceled. You had a skunk situation, all this stuff. And that's what I woke up to at like 9 AM. And at this point I'm super hungover because we had drank like crazy the night before. At least I drank like crazy the night before. And to Andy's point, we were pretty, we were pretty iffy on the start time. We were like, oh, man, 10 a.m. kind of sucks, but it's it's whatever. I guess we'll do it. By the time I get picked up by Kevin, M- Mike, and Roger, I enter the car, and I've never seen a group of just demoralized people like this. Where Mike, I associate with energy and positivity and goodness. And Mike, the whole time in the car, I was like, bro, are you going to be good? Like, are you okay? <laughs> like, are, you, are you sure you want to go to Six Flags right now? We're about to ride roller coasters, my guy. Yeah. And the whole Guys, time, like, so Mike was... 
Mike was the one that seemed to have felt it the most. Uh, cause legit, like he was sitting in the front seat. He had his head back. Well, he, he Mike, remember that Mike didn't come down until 5 a.m. in the morning that same day. So Mike was going he has through not slept. it. And the whole time I'm like, yeah, like you good, bro. You good? Like you're gonna make it. And Mike was doing the thing where I think Mike has a way of trying to speak energy into existence where mm-hmm. he's like, Oh, I'm gonna be good, man. I got this. Like it's gonna be a good time. We're all gonna have fun and all this stuff. And it's the thing where I think oftentimes Mike says that shit and it works like 100. But this was one of the times where I would see him say it, the words would leave his mouth mm-hmm. and it just wouldn't work. Like Gosh. it felt like you were jump starting a car and the car just yep. wasn't turning on the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's that it's, bi- so it's sad. that Bioware magic. It's that Bioware magic where you just assume that it's gonna happen and you want and. And you know Mike's feeling like shit, and I've seen Mike, and I've you know I've heard Mike when he's in pain from maybe a sickness or something. Like, hey, Mike, you good? About- oh yeah, oh yeah. You give me give me a couple uh, chai teas, and I'll be right back in it, bro. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling good. It's like, no, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to do this. <laughs> like, it's okay not to be okay. And it was that thing too, where halfway there, I was like, guys, we don't have to do Six Flags. This isn't a thing we have to do. But Kevin, we Kevin's thing to. was we already paid for it. <laughs> Oh yeah, which yeah, I would have been. I would have been taking the losses. Non-refundable. <laughs> would have taken that losses, right? Blessing. I would have taken and, uh, that loss. Yeah, we got there, and I, you know, everybody listening out there, I like to keep it pretty PG. But I'm going to be a hundred percent honest for everybody right now. I felt so bad. I needed to shit, and I needed to sleep really bad. <laughs> So I was battling this feeling of like, I'm going to shit my pants. Like, you know, that weird hungover slash you've been up for too long and you've yeah. ate a lot. Yeah, you need yeah. to shit type feeling. And it was just like, oh, let's go ride roller coasters. And it's like, if I don't find a nice toilet here soon, I might explode inside. Not, <laughs> not a magic mountain toilet, right? That's no, not no. what you're looking for when you're feeling that pressure on every part of the inside of your body. And so we get all together, right? We get all the gang together, and we're we're waiting in line to get in. Well, before and then we, before we, we get there, I him. also wanted I want to shout out. Um, this is peak Kevin's driving. <laughs> oh my <laughs> where god! It, six Flags. It was we're what like an hour minutes, away. We're thirty. It's an hour and six minutes. We were thirty minutes behind. Fortunately, the person driving the other car is a goddamn moron who gives terrible directions and always goes the dumbest way. So he took an hour and a half to get there. So we actually arrive at the exact same time. The other person, mm-hmm. I think, being Tim Gettys. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's James Burke. James Burke. Yeah. 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 There you go. But yeah, yeah, Kevin's Kevin's you know doing peak Kevin driving all the way up to mm-hmm. Six Flags, which I don't think was helping Michael's situation we got there at like all. Forty-five no. minutes. It was great. No. But, like we know it's the Starbucks, there. would you not think about using the Starbucks bathrooms? Because traditionally they're pretty nice and standalone. We got picked up at 935, Nick, and it was <laughs> we need to go. There was no, oh, can I take 15 minutes? Like, like it's like get your shorts on, Mike. We're going type stuff. So sure, I felt well, like we had yeah, a- I would have just hard passed on all of this. What's my, favorite is like a, uh, my favorite instance of Kevin's driving is yeah, we get to the parking oh, lot, uh I, like, parking I area normally, of six flags. Let me, let me please go for it. I don't normally hear it. Let's do this. Hear it. We were just in Let's a rush. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin cuts off this lady really hard at a stoplight. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope. you're mixing no, up. He does not. No, he does not. You're mixing up two stories. You're mixing up two stories. We got off the freeway and there was a <laughs> that was giant, another time. <laughs> there was a giant was. line. No, he's mixing up two stories. There was we were got off the freeway and there was a giant line of people giant waiting line. to go in the oh in the, yes, like, there's this one on the turn and I'm like, well. I, we're late. I have to be an asshole. So I just go on the other lane and then like 90% like through the end, I like jump in, you know, it's a dick yep. move. I'm Cut sorry. For a lot of we people. were late. Yeah, you're right. It's a dick move. But then we, we were turning left and some lady is like on her phone. The light is green. Two cars in front of her have moved. She's not doing anything. So I honk at her. And oh my God, poor blessing I, was so scared. I, he's like, this woman can identify yeah. me? Like she caught eyes well, with here's me. The thing. You, she gave you me haunted the her, not you. And then you bypassed her. And I look and I make eye contact <laughs> with this lady. And she is cussing us the fuck out. She is not having it. She's very I've never angry seen someone moment. curse someone out like so aggressively. Like yeah, that. it uh, was like. It and was she wild. like she was saw fine, me guys. specifically was worse, the thing like she didn't see I don't think she saw the rest of you guys she might have seen Roger but she definitely saw my face Bless, and we were arriving in the parking lot she was in line with us afterwards for forty five minutes like right in front of us she did not see you she did not notice you and the whole no the whole point, time I was on my splinter cell shit of like this lady is not gonna see my I, face I, like anytime I, I saw her I turned my back to her 
I'm, I was yeah. terrified of this woman. I, yeah, so, so we get. Uh-huh. I, I got three. I got three things I want to say, Nick. I feel like you'll appreciate this because one yeah. of them. We decide this Motley Crue is going to go, right? And of course, a lot of that came from Kevin pressuring, which then led to Andy going, which then led to us going. You already heard the story. There was the Cool Greg factor of Kevin trying to get Cool Greg to go. And I tell Kevin, I'm like, don't. Don't even try. He doesn't want to go. I know he doesn't. He is. He's been telling me he doesn't want to do the stuff. He only wants to go to what he has to. Like, cool. And Kevin's like, I don't know, man. I don't know. And he convinced Cool Greg. And I'm like, I don't know, dude. This isn't going to go well. Lo and behold, the next morning, all of us are feeling like, why the fuck are we doing this? I talked to Cool Greg. I, I knock on his door. I'm like, hey, man, like, you ready to go? He just, like, looks at me. He hands me a $50 bill. He's like, hey, just give that to Kevin. I just closes the door. Fuck, yes, he did. Fuck, <laughs> yes, like, he did. I love I how drunk Cool Greg you, had cool Greg. gotten at the time. I love <laughs> yeah. it. But the thing yeah. is, Cool What's Greg made the right decision. amazing is that Cool Greg had the $50 bill. Ready. I love it. Just he went. To, he ready. got it two days earlier. Was like, this is just in case I get too drunk. That was perfect. Cool Greg made, made the right decision in the moment because no by the time way. we got to this long ass, by the time we got to the long ass Six Flags line, it, I was obvious to tell that like looking around, everybody was hungover. Like people mm-hmm. weren't feeling great. It was hot. Mike was about to die. Like it was not. It was not looking great. Mike is, but, is, is, is Mike's gone yeah. septic because so, all the shit in his lower colon the, had, needs to come out. Things. Two last things I want to say about this, though. So we, we get there. Me, Andy, and James are in a different car to get there, right? And just first off, from my perspective, there is no rush. We're there all day. It's going to be fine. So I, why Kevin's cutting motherfuckers off, I don't know. <laughs> but what I do know, what I do know is that when we get to the parking lot, again, two separate cars, I don't, we don't know where they are. As far as we're concerned, <laughs> they're way behind us, okay? That's like, we think thought. that we are about 30 minutes earlier than them. And so we're like, okay, we're getting in line. They'll meet us. No fucking problem because that's how adults work. But no, we see this car fucking going crazy <laughs> through the parking lot. No. And I, I hear it before I see it. And I look over and I'm like, Oh, is that Kevin? And I, I was joking. I was fucking joking. And the car starts getting closer and closer. And Andy looks at me. James, James goes, hey, hey, it is Kevin. And of course it's Kevin. This fucking car, just like Indiana Jones ride coming through this parking <laughs> lot. And it's just like, God damn, dude. <laughs> well, well, like, so, so w- I'm waiting for Tim. And Tim texts me. is like, um, hey, we're running late. It's James Burke. Of course, we're late. That's kind of like what he does. <laughs> so um, Tim gets to my place around, what, 1030? Yeah. 1040. Really, really late. So I'm thinking we're the late ones. And then we're about 40 minutes into this drive. And then Kevin calls Tim and says, hey, we're at the McDonald's in Daly City. And I'm like, fuck, these guys are going to be so goddamn late. Like, we're going to wait for them for like an hour. But we took the Golden Gate Bridge because it's closer to my apartment. Stupid I think James way. just felt more comfortable Stupid. taking that route. Yeah, he should have taken the East Bay Bridge, Kev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bay yeah, you gotta take the Bay Bridge. Uh, um, and yeah. He, I got like, two things really quick, Kevin. Or do you go? Go, go, I, Kevin. Real I'll fast, wait. real quick. If, like, I, I understand that you guys aren't pressed for time, but, like, I was aware the later we are, the longer the admission line is. If you get there right when they're open, you're in. And guess what you get to do? Run to the first ride you can, and you ride it. And then, then you're like, hey, man, I was there for 10 minutes. I got to ride a ride. Instead, we didn't do that. Go ahead, Mike. So I'm battling fighting off the biggest shit I've ever had in my life. <laughs> oh, <So, laughs> hey. There is a whole nother organism yeah. living inside of Mike. <laughs> I'm bad. Name. And we get through the end. I, I could have felt that. Move. And James Burke is like, hey, I got to use the restroom. So everybody was like, all right, cool. And I looked at Roger and Blessing and I said, I'm going to be a while. So you just leave me and I'll find you all later. Right. Mm-hmm. Mind mm-hmm. you, I was ready to send it y'all. Just so everybody's aware. I'm no chump when it comes to amusement parks. I left my phone, my dumb. wallet, my it's entire dumb. life in the every, car. Cause I was ready to time, full on send it in the amusement park time with no Mike would waiting. Go anywhere. My concern was like, Hey, we can't lose Mike. Cause then we're going to have a lost child situation. All right. He doesn't have to go. Kevin, you're going to have to go over the loudspeaker. It's a good, has someone found a 30 year old man. <laughs> Because I loved, he's lost. Someone come find him. I loved Mike walking up to me and him being like, dude, the fucking craziest night. Like, and I had only been told about it because of Barrett, who told me before I left because I was not looking at the Slack. And I go, when you all when you left the Discord party last night and said, I'm going to download Valor and I'll be right back. How long did uh, like how long did you wait for this to happen? He goes, oh, five minutes. 
it took five minutes for that fucking skunk to, to spray <laughs> Cecil. Like it was instantaneous. So I thought that little tidbit was hilarious. You guys are out of fucking control. I love it. Wait, and I so think wait. it's so. Me and James uh, go to the bathroom, and now, mind you, whenever you go to these amusement parks, the front bathroom is always going to be the most trafficked. And horrible. it's going to be absolutely horrible, horrible right? Absolutely so me and James right. go in there, and James knows my situation. We walk up, and he sees the most unusable toilet there is, looks at it, does this, and walks away. I go in there. I look at him like, fuck, I'm not going to the bathroom here. I take a piss. I come out. And he goes, I can't believe you used that. It's like, well, I didn't use that. And so now I'm still battling the shits right now. And everybody goes, let's get on a ride. And no, I didn't feel like Mike. it was time to leave. So now we all make it to Superman the ride, one of the oh, fastest Superman the ride. God. And my body is saying, and you might shit your pants to get on this me, ride, me, Mike. Me, and me, I'm going to let the team take me, over from there. The line is so short. We look at it and we're like, oh, man, finally, go. there's going to be some peace. You know, things are going to go a little smoothly because mm -hmm. the line for Superman, tiny. We get in the line, we start going, and it's like, oh, okay. No, there was a little bit of a coil over here we didn't see, a little bit longer than we thought. Then the Superman ride breaks down, so we have to wait an so hour. So we for think some... it breaks down. No, no, it, it does, does not break Tim, down. Tim, the first five time... or six people over the course of time faint. Tim, the first <laughs> from time either going on the ride or from the heat. Either way, Tim, the it's first like, time, damn. The first time it did break down because they had the technicians come in. It was while it was broken down, at least two people that we saw fainted, and that mm -hmm. made us. Stay in line. It was for, ominous. I shit you not. How hot it was, was it? Three. It was like yeah. 80 degrees, it was Joey. It wasn't that hot. But like it was, for, it was ominous though because we were standing in this line that turned out way longer than we thought it would be. And over the course of, I want to say 30 to 40 minutes, just periodically on the on the intercom, you would hear, uh, "Hey everybody, uh, the the <laughs> <laughs> the ride is delayed. Currently delayed. Uh, we'll be back with updates soon." And then they would undelay it and be like, "Okay, cool. Everything's everything's looking good." And then 10 minutes later, they would come back and be like, uh, "It looks like the Superman ride is delayed." And the whole time we're in line, just suffering. I just being hot, watching people go down one by one from other groups, and we're like, <laughs> "What do we do here? This is not fun. This Bless. is not good whatsoever." Yeah. Bless, I felt like we were trapped in an episode of like Black Mirror, and the whole episode mm. just centered around <laughs> this line where just weird <laughs> shit is happening, and it's its own little pocket of existence that doesn't like live in reality. It was so bizarre, and we were there for so long. And we contemplated leaving and we contemplated upgrading the passes. There was so much contemplation of like, this sucks. We're two hours in. Yeah. We got here really, really late already at noon. It's two. I'm starving. I am getting a headache from like not eating. Mine's gonna and we're still we're still really far away. <laughs> and we have plans yeah. to go to Nick's comedy show later that night. Mm -hmm. It was one of those things where we're looking at our, our our metaphorical watches and we're just being like, oh no, this is a bad yeah. time. We made a lot of mistakes. This is hot. This is miserable. Nick, you would have just went postal. Like it, oh, you yeah. would have ne not been able to deal with a second of the bullshit we were going through. Uh, but we decide, fuck it. We're upgrading. We're getting the, the, the flash pass. The thing that allows us to just go on the rides we want to go on. And it was the best decision we made. We went from having the worst day ever to doing every single ride in the course of like an hour and a half. And it I, was just, I do want to shout out magical. that before it was the best, best decision, it was the worst decision for a yeah. hot second. That's oh, all that's my that's that's you turn off your camera. Do you want me to turn on my camera? Oh, good? is my camera turn off? Yeah. yeah. I'll turn it back on. I think it just, it's overheating. I'm back. But it was, it was the thing where uh, we made the call, okay, let's upgrade to the flash pass, whatever it's called. And that apparently required us to go up to the front desk oh to then and have that transfer go through. Well, and that took yes. another hour. That took another, another yeah. full because we hour. had additional issues. So, like in the in the line as Has we're upgrading the flash pass, yet or no? No, I mean, not yet. No, not yet. He's close. No. He's close. I think it was dur I think it was yeah, actually very during close, this, very right? Close. Was, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think the thing this. was, he's like, I'm, I'm gonna go buy everyone ice cream or something. It goes away for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Tim and Kevin know better, but in the line, basically there was a, there was a an executive decision made to try and upgrade the flash pass while we're in the line. Uh, it did not like, work. to make it go. And then it, it kind of fucked things but for us a little bit. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. While we're in the line, like legitimately, this is the most upset I've been, I think, in the last like six months. And I, I have to say, looking around, like there was a moment where I felt so bad 
that like I had been the impetus for all of this happening. Where it's like <laughs> look, I, I've never looked, I've never looked at blessing and been like, oh shit, this man hates the decision that he's made before. Like I've never seen that in his eyes. Oh. But it was blessing so and I like, were, were walking around and we're like, we're leaving. Like if this is like this isn't clear up, we're gone. We're gone. We're gone. I will, I will, it, like yeah, we were we were we so all, we were so we doomers all, about it. We all felt that way. And it was like really, really upsetting. So we were like, let's just buy these stupid passes that allow you to, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And we're waiting in line. And of course, <laughs> we're waiting in line for 45 minutes. And when we get to the front, the dude's like, oh no, you have to go to that line. Oh, God. And, it's, it was and like, this is about, so this, this is about this three is and a half hours. You're supposed to be in. This is the line you're supposed to be in, but you have to get in that line first to get this other thing before coming to us. And so at this point, it's just Kev and I at the kiosk. And I, Kev, to the both of our credits, it was one of the best tag team efforts I have ever had with Kev of dealing with this man, of mm-hmm. just like pleading with him of, hey, we're going to be stern with you. We got seven boys here that need to go somewhat on some goddamn roller coasters. One of them okay. is about to explode with poop. <laughs> with fucking <laughs> shit, okay? Yeah. Like, please help us. And the, Kevin got the guy to be like, okay, go down there right now. Do your thing. Come back up. Wave me down. And, and we'll we'll make it happen. And, dude, that guy made it happen. Yep. We got yep. our fucking pass. And, when, yeah. we, and then, when we went down the there. Races. When we went down there, we discussed the curse. Yeah, and, and which then broke the curse. everything, curse. everything, everything went so yep. well. Yeah, at one so point, so we smooth. fucking sent it this weekend. At one point, Tim looks at me and goes, "Andy, if Kevin ever wants us to do something, I like talk <laughs> like we. I need to talk to you first, no, and like no. anybody else, just to kind of like." To kind of get problem a better solved. grip on reality. That's it. It's just a problem solve before yeah. we get into the plan yeah. itself. That's yeah. it. Uh-huh. Logistics. Yeah. My logistics. favorite. My favorite too was hype. Not so watching, good at logistics. Watching no. Kevin and Tim talk to the guy, and it was either me and Mike or me and Roger, maybe all three of us, who were like, "This shit is not going well." <laughs> like, yeah, the, no. the, the amount of sternness <laughs> and the amount of just back and forth in the hand, like the hand motions that the were going hand on. Motions, yeah. It was the hand motions that made us go, "Oh no, oh no, this is this this is not popping." Um, but yeah, like from there on the whole weekend wrong. turned around, I think because we acknowledged the curse where mm-hmm. then we started, we went back, like we marched back to it's the, like Super- the Superman dude. ride. It's like yeah. Like we, we marched back onto the Superman ride, skipped the whole line, saw the, saw the line that we were in, looked back at it and we we're like, Oh, we're going straight to the a front. A lot of sad kids. A lot of a lot sad, of sad kids. kids. At we us. saw another we person like, yeah. receiving paramedic <laughs> treatment on the way there, but <laughs> we that's did. neither here or there. <laughs> that's neither here or He's there. not joking. <laughs> <laughs> that is not and a joke. That is serious. We saw someone was, on the ground getting help. And you know the really, really sad, selfish part of me is that we are walking down the flash pass line, the faster yes. line. And we're walking down that line, and I see people grouped up, and I go, fuck, the line is still this long? Oh, never mind. That person fainted later. <laughs> like, if we're going to ride this <laughs> ride, no, yeah. no, That's what it felt <laughs> like. Though. Form, then. That's what it felt like. It felt like we were taking a victory walk. So we get there, and we all sit in the Superman. It was, it was, there was a funny thing where the each each seat has two seats uh like each row has two seats in them and so we were all partnered up and because of how the, the shuffle went i got sent to the <laughs> to the back of the ride with a stranger and i was like all right well this is weird but it's whatever but we get on the ride and as soon as that ride goes i was like all right this is it like this is all turned day. around this is this is gonna be a good day because i kid you not getting off of that ride was some of the best feeling i've had in 2021 it <laughs> and changed I'm, all of us <laughs> i am so yeah, happy play on this baby I'm so happy that Tim kind of related to me because going on oh, but before we did this, Nick, I told Tim, dude, I get headaches from roller coasters because I laugh so goddamn hard. Like I am laughing hysterically. And I'm glad that Tim kind of talked to me after the fact of like, Andy, when you mentioned that, I was like, what a weird feeling to have. What do you mean laughing hard? That's so bizarre. And he was like, I get it. That's exactly what it is. You're laughing yeah. so fucking hard on these rides. Wait, this is weird. Is this the Superman ride we're watching right now? Yeah, no, dude. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. It is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks yellow. It looked so crazy. That is not the Superman ride. You were thinking of the one where we lay down. Totally different. 
That's yeah, so this, wild. this was undeniably the like most that. intense roller coaster I've ever been in my entire beautiful. life. It, it was yeah. so fast, so extreme. And what we just saw right there is it going straight up in a corkscrew. And yeah. you're going hell fast up. I have never experienced something like that, let alone all <laughs> the other <laughs> birds. This shit was crazy. We leave this thing and we are hyped. All of us are like, yeah, nothing up. can hold us back except for Roger, who's like, I need a break. Yeah, this is <laughs> <a> <laughs> And I'll go on the next thing, and that will be a theme throughout the rest of the things. But we then go on this ride, Batman, Nick. This is the ride that taunted us as we were in the giant line yeah, waiting D, to Nick. get in the park. It looks a lot like Superman, but different. No, uh, look at the no. seats. Look at the this seats spinning the around independently. Oh, fuck that. Yeah, this was this that's, that. why, that's why I said no. That's why I said no, Nick. No, no, I was like, fuck that. Can, can I tell Nick, a quick story here of me and Kevin? Me and Kevin. <laughs> Kevin says, Mike, don't ever do this again. But me and Kevin sit down. And you know me, I come from the service industry, very similar okay. to this amusement park. And I look at the kid, I go, hey, Raul, what's going on? How's your day? Oh, I'm having a great day. I'm like, how long have you been working here? Oh, a month and a half. I go, oh, good for you. Kevin starts yeah. to give me the look. I go, oh, yeah, you you've been enjoying it? Oh, they say I'm the fastest one here. I, I'm, I'm the fastest. And I go, oh, you messed up there. You're supposed to say you're the safest one I'm, here. I'm the fastest <laughs> at checking people's Raul, harnesses. Exactly. Oh, Raul no. starts to check our harness and then look. And he starts tapping his foot because Susie over there is taking her time to make sure everybody's safe. Kevin now is looking at me going, don't ever do I that again. I told you so many it was times. terrifying. Don't break the illusion. The, this ride was insane. This ride felt. This is fucking bonkers. If you've ever been caught by a wave and been like spun like that, it Tumbling. felt like that in real, like in outside with the, the ability to breathe. It it's was really weird. Crazy. It's a, it's a weird one because looking at it, Nick, it doesn't go super fast. No, but you it doesn't. feel so much weird just inertia from yeah. falling at a different angle that you're just things. you're just not used to. And the funniest thing was the there are there are carts of four. And if two people look at each other, you're starting off with two people kind of facing each other. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a card of four and another card of four. We should have split up three and three, but we just ended up not doing that. And so it was blessed or it was only uh, Mike and Kevin on one of them. And the other card of four is me, Blessing, James Burke and Tim. And we're and they we see them starting to go off and they're prepping for this, right? It's not like a fast takeoff. It's it's like a lead up, you know, and we go, oh, they're going first. They're going first. And I'm kind of like, who's who's on that ride? Uh, only Kevin and Mike. Oh, that's right. There was no strangers with them. It's only Kevin and Mike. And we see them doing it and we see the ride about to start. And then we just hear <laughs> like the craziest <laughs> fucking screams we've ever heard in our lives. And it is hilarious. And I regret after the ride, I told Tim this. I regret being on the opposite side because you're going up, you're facing each other, mm -hmm. Nick. And as you go on this lead up, the people in front of you are now above you. Okay. And they're facing the way that they're about to go down. Right. But we're facing out backwards. So we're seeing the rest of the city. We can't see the track behind us. Bad and we're like, all right, we're backwards right now. This kind of fucking sucks. I don't like this. And we finally get to the crest and we see all of the goddamn fucking planet earth <laughs> and then we eventually like start going backwards and then it's just like the most wild thing ever the crazy thing about it though is you are harnessed down but there's also cushioning there yeah. to provide a bit of a give like in case you are moving a whole lot and the harness is tight and it's safe or whatever but the cushioning moves a lot and there's a moment where i am just free falling downwards not i don't know what way is up but this cushioning is giving a lot and I'm feeling myself falling through the cushioning and it's like, and I think it's the harness yeah, and I'm like, the fucking harness is falling off. And I have like a mid panic moment. And once we kind of get safe, I go, I kind of pull the cushion. I was like, Oh no, this shit just moves a lot. But the harness is super tight. It was fucking terrifying, dude. This ride was wild. This ride, whoever designed this ride was on another one. Did yeah. anyone check with each other to make sure that their cushions move too? Because maybe Raul just didn't do his job that great that day. With that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all had the same experience. Like that shit was that was the one ride that was fucking awesome, and I can't wait to go on it again next time we go. But yeah, it was one of the rides day. this time that it was like it's a it's a one per day ride. <laughs> like you oh, don't yeah. want to do my, that shit again. That ride fucked up my neck for two days. Like Monday, I was still feeling the the strain from that ride on my neck. 
Rob, no, I, think I, went on on uh, yeah. I, I wasn't on this ride and then I made I went to go use the bathroom. I didn't have to take big shit like Mike did. <laughs> but I, I had to go I had to go use the bathroom and I, I left all of my like wallet, my keys, every my keys, my uh, my phone, everything in Andy's backpack. And I felt like a fucking lost child. Like because they were taking so long. I didn't realize you guys had to like split up. And I was watching and I was like, is that Mike? Is that Mike? Is that Blessing? Is that Tim? And I felt like so I was like waiting around like the e entrance of the exit or whatever, like a fucking like I was looking for a mom and dad like the entire time. Like it was fucking sad. And then you guys eventually came and I felt uh, safe. I, but I was like, I thought I lost y'all. To rewind it for just a second, I do want to shout out a couple of things the Superman that I that I just remembered. One before I want you to do that, bless before you do that, real quick. I'm just putting a note out there for everybody. Uh Patreon people, we appreciate and love you. There's not gonna be a post show for this one. We're just gonna go long. We're gonna keep telling this story because there's, yeah. there's this is too much fun. The the dopest thing about the Superman is that uh I think you might see it on the video at some point. There's a point where it goes up, and I believe you're backwards at this point, and it stalls upside down. And I think we all had the same experience of the only thing keeping us from uh, from our seats in planet Earth was our seat belts, and we're all just hanging. And that was one of the coolest feelings I've had during a roller coaster. So, so I want to cool. I want to shout that out. I also do want to shout on the Batman. The thing that made that one super wild too is the fact that you're you're looping in like multiple ways at the same time in a way that made it the most disorienting ride I've ever I've ever been on where not only is the the rail the railing itself uh designed with with loops in there but the seats are spinning at the same time and it felt like it was designed by a madman uh by a madman but so by the, by the time I hopped off it I was like yeah this is a this might have been the most insane one Batman it's, was on another level it's crazy to me because I'm looking at pictures of like I'm trying to find video of the Superman from Six Flags Magic Mountain down in Los Angeles and it's a completely different ride have oh you guys yeah, ever yeah been it's on that totally one? different. Yeah. yeah, it's more like a V two, right, where it shoots you up. You go in the Krypton fast. with the ice. Yeah, you go into Krypton with ice, but it's weird because I'm looking at it right now, and it looks like you ride backward in this one. But I distinctly remember riding forward, and all it did was you sit there for a hot second, and the guy's like, "Okay, everyone, you ready?" And we're like, "Yeah, we're ready." And he goes, "Cool." And then you hear like the equivalent to like ten jet turbines fire up. And it just launches you all the way up this ramp until you see Superman looking down on you. And then you just fall backward. And that's the entire ride. And it's the most exhilarating thing that I've ever experienced. Yeah, there's so Nick, that's one this thing ride, except this one does the same thing. The jet tur turbine turbines, it starts, it shoots you out one way, but then you come back down and you start building momentum until you get to the roller coaster part and go that's crazy. Fucking insane. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, so I, I, I want to say like this. I think the Superman ride is my new favorite ride that I've ever been on. And as soon as we got the fast passes or flash passes, uh, everything changed. This became one of like a 10 out of 10 of experience. We're, we're just going on as many rides as we want back to back. We even like hanging out now, with penguins, miracles are happening. sharks. The, the curse is over. <laughs> we standing like the, there's it was so hard to find food, so hard to find food. We're in this giant line. And then Tim's just standing next to this window. It opens up next to him. And it's like, hey. Sorry, go ahead. What? What? No, no, nothing. Sorry, the windows changed. It freaked me out. Oh, um, Nick, I, I, I do want to point out that you're you're right in being confused because the whole time I'm looking at all of these DC themed rides. Yeah. And I'm going, damn, these are all different from the ones in Fiesta, totally Texas, different. San Antonio, yep. because in San Antonio, it's the the Superman Krypton coaster. And it's red and blue themed, but completely different track. Um, there's I a do, big yeah. Wonder Woman ride that we'll talk about here in a second. But in San Antonio, no, the Wonder Woman ride there was called the Lasso of Truth. And the one in mm -hmm. San Antonio is the Golden Lasso. Mm -hmm. And it's an actual coaster. The one here in Magic Mountain or whatever the hell it's called. Is that what it's called? You this guys are Discovery Kingdom. Discovery Kingdom. I always say the wrong fucking thing. Yeah, the one that we went to, well, the one that you all got on was not a coaster at all. But they're all DC themed. It's just... I feel like every location has their different iteration. Yeah, of I, it. Put, uh, I put mine in uh, in assets. By the way, if you guys want to see, there's like a quick POV of the one that I that I rode. That's actually front forward, which is cool. In case Six Flags that I used to go to was Six Flags St. Louis. I used to go there all the time, and I was I, it was surprised that the ride was different, like the Batman ride specifically, because there's a big Batman ride over there as well. Uh, and there's also a Mr. Freeze ride uh, there as well that is fucking insane. That I was surprised wasn't here, but. You know, like it's a it's a pretty cool thing that like these these different parks are different in different ways. Like they have the same the same rides with different takes on them. Well, it's so funny because like growing up, 
you were either like a Disneyland dude or a Six Flags Magic Mountain guy. And it wasn't until I hit like maybe my late teens that I figured out I could be both because Disneyland didn't really have roller coasters until like California Adventure hit. Like we had like Thunder Mountain, right? Tim, like Space Mountain, but they weren't really. Horn, yeah. Not horn, but they weren't. There, yeah, like a little thrill rides. Yeah. 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 yeah that's one fun. thing I was most. That's one thing I was most excited about is, you know, Tim is the, the Disney fanatic and, um, and I'd normally like love coasters. I love roller coasters and having the crazy loop de loops and stuff like that. And for Tim being like, this is the first time we've been here in 20 years. And the last time we were here, there was none of this. It was just an aquamarine attraction where you go and watch whales and dolphins Sounds do cool. tricks and shit. And there might be a water ride here or there, but there's no roller coasters. They introduced this DC stuff way later. The one thing that yeah. all Six Flags seem to have, though, uh, is a basketball court. Like that's oh, it. The, the game, the, yeah, the game, like you know, hit the three point uh mm-hmm. shootout or whatever it's called. Like, it seems like every Six Flags I've been to has that exact thing, and I think that's hilarious. I wish we hit it, damn it. Yeah, we really so, should have had Andy and Mike hit it. Andy would have rocked it because the, the record for the day, I think, was eight points, and you get 18 balls. Andy, Andy would have rocked that. You kidding me? Like, that's so, that's so yeah. simple. That's, I'm hitting 16 out of 18, Mike. Bro, I'm next you weekend, right though, like, I let's just go. go. <laughs> so we end up finally making the adult decision we do all the rides and we're like all right let's go home let's figure out the rest of the night so well, whatever group well, can remain wants to go to nick's place what's up Les? one more thing regarding our luck at six flags there was a point where we were, we were all really hungry after doing a bunch of rides and oh my, oh my we, god yeah we went to figure out like okay what are we going to eat how are we going to do this because we have plans later but i think we were all just tired and super hungry so we go find the food spot in six flags and First, it's that decision of, all right, what do we want? And what, mm-hmm. what we want is based on what the lines are. But I think there are some options where, where we're all like, uh, no, I don't, I don't really I like didn't want thing. a corn dog, Nick. I didn't yeah. want a corn dog. I, get it. I, I was right there with you. I was like, I don't feel like corn dogs either. And we had a lot of that. And that, I think we, I think at one point we were just like, fuck it. We're getting pizza. Because that's the thing everybody wants. Everybody wants pizza. But the pizza lines were insane. And so we all... Uh, we were all just like, fuck it, you know, let's stand in line for pizza. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then slowly, because it's such a hot day, we're all like, all right, you know, one person stay in line, we're all going to get shade. And I think it was Kevin and Andy who, who who hung out in line while the rest of us were hanging out in the shade uh, at the front of the line nearby a different window that was closed. And after a few minutes of just hanging out in shade, one of us turn to the window that's closed and, and they see somebody standing there. And we're like, hey, is this window open? And she's like, Oh yeah, I'm taking orders, and we all look at each other and we're like, "Uh, all right." <laughs> we start so, taking orders from that window. Like, meanwhile, everyone just comes, gets in line, and we just get food within one minute, and it was yeah. just like the these curse lines has been lifted. <laughs> these lines are 45 minutes long, and we just happen to be standing by an open window that was just to the side that nobody was paying attention to. What's up, Snow Mike? Mike, Nick, you wouldn't even believe it. The girl walked up, opened the window, and she says nothing to us. And I looked at her, I was like. What's up? You're going to do something? You're going to take some orders? She goes, yeah, I'll take some orders. Doesn't wave her hand out the window. Hey, nope, everybody, nope. I'm open over here. Just quietly opens the window and stares at us. And I was like, okay, are we doing this? And so now it became this weird, like, all right, everybody line up, line up right now. Yeah. So Andy, go get cool, Andy, go get it. We yeah. didn't tell anybody. And all these people start looking at us in line like, what the hell is this commotion? Yeah. I'm like, get Andy right now. The and look like, of Kevin. ordered was wild. The look that Kevin had. Kevin just walks up to me like, and he's like, hey, dude. Uh, they're taking orders over there. What do you want? <laughs> and it was just like, it was the funniest kind. And I was like, uh, a pepperoni? What do, you, what do you want to drink? Uh, Diet Coke, if they have it, Coke Zero? All right, cool. <laughs> he just left back. And Wait, I'm waiting in line there. In line just in case. I'm waiting in line just in case. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then smart. eventually, yeah. like, they show me the pizza. I'm like, fuck it. I'm getting out of here, dude. This is uh, this is amazing. It's, it's I can't believe panic. how perfectly. Because we treated it like a covert operation where mm-hmm. as yeah. soon as we smart. realized that the, the window was open, all of us were like, Oh shit! We got to get the rest of the people here without alerting other people yeah, that this line do. is open. And so it was like the exact. If you if you ever play FIFA, like the opponent's the keeper being out of the goal for whatever reason, and realizing that oh, this is your one chance to make this shot and get this yep. goal before this keeper makes it back. That was and the exact of, same thing. I think the big sort of uh, wrench in the gears that we were dealing with, Nick, was that everybody's starving. But the, all the places we wanted to eat at did not. They weren't accepting in-person orders. And you had to order online. And the shortest wait was about 50 minutes. That's and so it's like, well, we can do an online order on the app or whatever. And then maybe go ride another ride. Yeah, let's probably do that. Or let's just look around. 
and it just it happens so beautifully and i'm thinking you know what i'm gonna i'm excited for this pizza i don't think it's gonna be good and to be fair it was like pretty above average which i was shocked by mm -hmm. And the garlic knots were fucking delicious. Yep. And it was the exact the carbonate, like it was the exact carbohydrates that I needed to kind we of like, like be re-energized. I felt so good. Yeah. It was Big fantastic. old Coke Zero. Big what old you Coke say, Zero. I said we ate like kings. Like I felt like we all okay. ate a lot of food and felt really good about it. It's funny Kevin's uh, interpretation is we ate like kings because my interpretation is we ate like little fucking rats because yeah. all of us <laughs> we did. went from one window to next to us was a whole other like uh, set of windows that were totally closed. Like n no food was being served. It was, an Asian, it was an Asian restaurant that wasn't open. It was just not open. But we're like, oh, there's shade. We can there's a little table we can all eat on. So we all go stand there in our eatings, but it looks like there's no line. So we had to tell off like. 20 different people like hey no this isn't a line we're just fucking rats trying to take down our scarf down our pizza garlic not hella fast yeah we had like a little ledge we had like a little ledge to like rest our food on and eat all of our shit it was an order amount of people that would walk up and be like oh do you want uh Asia? yeah they got like chicken teriyaki and we're like no it's we're not no, we're, we're not in line here. sorry we're, we're just eating, eating this pizza that we got insanely fast and the day was just perfect it was yeah such a it's great day. It, and this is coming off of that first three and a half to four hours where everything was suffering to now this being probably an hour to an hour and a half of just pure bliss and pure everything going our way that was the kickoff of okay no our luck is turned around the this joker ride fantastic, fantastic. Oh, medusa yeah. fantastic every, you every all went on wonder awesome. woman you all went on wonder woman and uh, to be clear i i told tim i was like whatever we do next i'm skipping out on because i just ate like yeah, we smart. just finished eating yep. We walked through the shark exhibit, which took at least three minutes. <laughs> it felt like it was such a quick little walk, and you walk through the conveyor belt and the aquariums all around you, and mm -hmm. I I love that sort of shit. And then they were like, oh, let's go on the Wonder Woman ride. And I was like, I'm sitting this out. I just ate. I'll go on whatever next ride we do. And they went on the Wonder Woman ride, and it is just this gigantic thing that you are. You sit in a giant circle, and it swings. It's just a fulcrum. And it goes so fucking high. I could not believe it. How tall, Tim? 170 feet in the air. No. Hitting the point that it went higher than I've ever had one of these go. And when it would reach the apex, we were like upside down entirely. And we were just hanging there 170 feet in the air. And I just looking down and I just see Andy <laughs> Blessing and Mike just like staring up at me. And it was the funniest thing. It's like, I just saw Andy's hair. Like, <laughs> it was so small. <laughs> it was wild. It was, it was like, and I'm glad I skipped out on that one, to be honest with you, because that one looked Same. like the it worst. It looked so fast and terrifying. It looked really fun, though. Like, if I hadn't eaten beforehand, I would have really wanted to go on that one. But after eating that much pizza, I was like, there's no way I'm spinning in the air at that height. That's a smart that velocity. The, the worst the I've ever been in a, in a carnival. This was a carnival, the OC Orange County like Fairgrounds is I polished off an entire barbecue pizza deep dish from Pachi's Pizza one time. And then I met up with Ty Root and we went on the Gravitron at the OC oh. at this thing. And I got Fucking off that and I, th I threw up into a broken toilet. And it's the worst <laughs> oh. I've ever felt both oh like physically and emotionally because I was like, somebody has to clean this up in this <laughs> toilet. Bro, I'm talking like, I mean like the porcelain on the toilet was broken. Like this thing was not working. It needed <laughs> a total, total overhaul. Kevin, I did, I, did I see that right? Was that was that the tallest pendulum ride at a, a amusement park? Uh, that's the Grand Adventure Kevin just, one in New York, in New Jersey, I think. Oh, oh. in New York. Okay, I gotcha. It, it, it was, was. At what point did Mike have a bowel movement? Did we figure this out? Oh, it was. That was while we were waiting the line. flash passes. So, oh, flash Nick, pass. just to give you a quick, quick reference to that, I was feeling that, and also super stony baloney at that point, and. Blessing and Roger turn to me and they go, this is the most displeased we've ever seen Mike in our entire life. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think it's important to note that he was asking, ripping the shit out of my fucking weed pen. And he <laughs> told me to go. He like commanded me on the line entering the, the place. He's like, you got to go get it. Gotta go get it. He didn't say please. He's like, go get it. Go get it. Gotta add the well, weed. Okay. Well, <laughs> leave your phone and wallet in the car, but bring it with the weed pen. <laughs> Definitely. Jesus Christ. So, okay, so we, we leave the theme park. It was one of the best experiences of our lives at the end of the day. Get in our cars to go home. We are wiped. We are sunburned. We are just, you know, that that level of tired you just are. Because keep in mind, this is now, as you all have heard on this podcast, our what? 
37 of a fucking it felt like three week adventure mm-hmm. and we still had more to do and it was like okay we got nick's comedy show on the boat and he's well, nick's been doing these boat tours forever i've been wanting to go on one of these boat tours forever but i was like i'm gonna save it post e3 we're gonna do this one we're gonna do it big and there was nothing i wanted to do less than this night go to this fucking boat show but i goddamn rallied bless rallied what's up. tim i gotta interrupt you because there was a thing that happened before the boat show yeah. that i'm yeah. sure kevin is gonna really want to talk about Oh my God! Yeah, right yeah. After six flags. Uh, uh, Holy yeah. shit! Is he here? Yeah, I think Kevin, Kevin might be doing something. Uh, uh, I, I let, let's get a little right preface now. to this. Oh, he he damn! Right. This is a really special moment. Well, so I'll, I'll yeah. give the context, and then I'll have one of you guys that were yep. there kind of yeah, fill yeah. in fill in the gaps. For anybody that's been listening to Kind of Funny podcast for a long time, so Roger, not you, but uh, anyone else would know <laughs> that Kevin has been trying to get us <laughs> to no. get this very specific ice machine. We, we did a whole topic about ice a couple weeks ago on the Kind of Funny podcast. These ice pellets that the ice machine gives you ice and water at the same time. Curry Up Now is this restaurant we always talk about. We always uh, hate on Greg Miller for ordering wrong like a fucking buffoon. Uh, but you've heard the stories, right? So Kev's talked about this ice machine so much, more so than even the food. But he convinced Bless and Roger and Mike that they need to try this food and more specifically this ice and this water. So they after wait, Discovery wait. Kingdom decide to go to this restaurant. So they go just to get the fucking water, just to get the ice. Kevin, take it from here. Well, no, we go because Roger's like, hey, I want to eat a burrito. And I'm like, we can go to the Curry Up Now, which is a fusion style burrito that's pretty good. And he's like, all right, we'll go check it out. I can't believe you, Roger, got a burrito in San Francisco and you took him to Curry Up Now. Well, it wasn't the only burrito that we were. He also already had gotten a breakfast burrito. And spoilers, the next day he gets the same breakfast burrito. And I offered to take him yesterday to my favorite burrito spot. There were a lot of burrito options. Okay? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I felt felt burritoed up. You know what I mean? It's fine. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, (laughs) So we get there. And I'm like, I'm stoked because like we're we're there for the burritos, but I have been talking about this fucking water machine. And yeah, I'm like, I was I'm more excited. excited about the water, honestly. Because like, the way Kevin gonna... described it, Kevin would break down the ratio of ice to water in this thing and describe it as the perfect ice water. Whereas mm-hmm. what, sixty percent ice or sixty percent water, forty percent ice, and it all and it pours at the same time, and it has like this perfect amount of coldness to it. Tim, and uh, one more bit of context I want to give. This is a minimum $3,500 piece of machinery that Kevin's been trying to get us to get for the new studio. So we walk in there and the machine is gone. And I'm like, no, the curse lives. (laughs) God damn it, right? So I walk up to the dude. I order my food. Roger orders his food. And then I do something that I feel like internally is like, why am I doing this? I start talking to the dude about the machine. Right, I'm just like, hey, uh, I just love that damn machine, man. Yeah, what's what's up with the ice machine? You know, it's it's missing. He's like, oh, we got ice. I was like, no, 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 no. You're misunderstanding. You have a machine that does ice and water, mm-hmm. and I love it. I actually love it so much. And as I'm saying this, I'm like, why am I talking to this man about this? He does not care. And Kevin, I've had so many of those instances in my life, and most of them, Tim Gettys was there to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, I I usually don't. Usually, when I'm talking to someone, I'm very comfortable with the situation. And then the, the guy's like, yeah, we had to take it down because of COVID, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, you know, my company's actually buying that same model, or at least I'm trying to get them to buy that same model because I like it so much. And then the man says, oh, you can just have ours. Are you that, fucking kidding me? <laughs> now, does this guy have the authority to give this machine away or is he just like, he was, fuck he the was guy? Very much, like, like, first of all, I've seen him there every time. That He's I've like gone. one of the owners. Okay, It, it, it seems that way, yeah. Uh, and, uh, I, he, I would assume he's a manager, uh, and I lose my mind, like lose. My I was overhearing mind. this all go down. I couldn't believe it. it. It honestly felt like something out of Atlanta or some kind of surreal movie where yeah. I'm st- I'm, I'm like behind Kevin and Roger in line. Kevin strikes up this conversation. I'm listening to it and I'm like, okay, yeah, Kevin's really excited to tell this guy about the ice machine. Oh, all right. That's cool. And then he says that. And I'm like. I don't. I can't imagine somebody being happier in a moment than Kevin is right but now. I'm hearing it was, go down. I, I understand it, but then Kevin just got so excited that he kept on saying, "Like, really? For real? For real? Like, you would come back, leave the store, come back, and be like, for real? I like, this, are so you sure about this? Like, I thought I thought he was gonna say no. Fuck you. <laughs> I thought he was gonna be like, last, yeah, get out like, of my car. Twenty four hours were so much, and this felt like such a big deal. And he was like, "Yeah, just hit me up, and we'll arrange to have it all prepped." 
Wow. So I'm so excited because first off, not only did Kevin well, get the ice machine, he got the ice machine. The actual that is insane. Ice machine. Tim, but, what? Uh, what's up, Kev? Go ahead. Uh, this is now the second time this weekend that I get a phone call that makes my heart and stomach drop before uh, it, it is revealed that it's not that big of a deal. First one was Joey calling me with the fucking refugees having to come to my house. Second one was Kevin with more panic than I've ever heard. Tim, Tim, Tim. I thought he was in a car crash. I yeah. thought Roger was dead. <laughs> I thought it was just fucking Roger, game everyone. over, dude. And he's like, no, we got the ice machine. We got the fucking ice machine. <laughs> <laughs> now kevin did we get the ice machine because it sounds like there's some trepidation in your voice right now unfortunately he told me to call him back on wednesday i called him back today and and many of you don't know any of this yet because this just happened uh during the twitch stream and he was like hey i talked to the owner and the owner says he's got other plans with it at least give you the, the model number so we can figure it out on our oh, own i have the model number i've had the model number for for months years actually well that's a bummer uh, well you know what we're gonna go to curry up now and we're gonna let snow mike mike save up a whole shit for three days and he's gonna blow their bathroom up for uh, i'm gonna dominate that bathroom <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna yeah. get a, tra a couple tarantulas <laughs> to the face and just explosive diarrhea all over that place uh I, by the way i am shocked that you guys came to my show that night shocked i was very very I, happy to see you but i would not have but like, the second year we're like we're gonna go to six flags magic mountain and spend all day in the sun drinking and smoking and pooping in their bathrooms and eating pizza i was like you guys are not coming tonight and i wouldn't have felt that against you let me tell you what nick when we arrived at kevin's house and we had t minus 20 minutes to get ready roger looked at me and goes mike i'm gonna call it i'm not gonna go and of course i was let down but i looked at him and i was like i have one goal and that's to make it to nick's comedy show and hang out with nick and all the comedians like i have to go so i take a shower i get dressed and right as i'm ready to walk out our boy Roger comes out suited and booted, fitted, ready to go, and gives yeah, you this big ass smile, like, let's go. And I'm like, Roger, that's my guy. And so we took an Uber over. We made it right on time to the boat. Kevin got us early. there. You perfect and everything. And like, we're ripping the pen. We're getting the comedy juices flowing. <laughs> we're excited as can be. And like, Nick, I know they've all told you, but you and Austin have found something so incredible and unique and fun that boat comedy tour was something out of this world and special i mean it was so much fun nick to get lost on the boat for an hour and a half to go travel around the bay and have this feeling like we're in a comedy club where like you're just tunnel visioned in on the comedians and everybody's hitting on all cylinders and then for tim to like tap me on the shoulder and be like look outside don't forget and like to look over and there's the bay bridge all lit up there's the piers all the way down, yeah. all the way to at and Park, just lit up as can be. And it's just like, man, this is a surreal feeling of having this comedy show feeling, but on a boat tour in San Francisco that like many people will never experience. And I mean, Nick, you knocked it out of the park and it was really something special. Right. So kudos to that. And that was a fun experience. Mom, as, I'm glad. As, oh, go ahead, Park. Oh, I was going to say as my first comedy experience, period, like that was fucking surreal. I was like, is this, are they always this good? <laughs> like this was it was it was a really fantastic time. It was really I, funny. I was like, no, and, not always that good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was I was hearing a lot of stories about about some uh, open mics. <laughs> on the, yeah, on the, well, we, to go to we had the great, are fun. Yeah, yeah, they're interesting for sure. Blessing has been in a couple of my shows now, too. So he's seen he's oh, seen yeah. the gamut. Um, yeah, it was uh, we had a particularly good lineup that night. We had a couple guest comics show up as well that we were able to throw on, which was cool. And then our headliner, Kyrie uh, Shabazz, was just just he's so funny. Sure. And so we had a good night. Um, and then we all decided to go oh, to real quick, real quick. I just want to have a moment to say it was incredible. I was blown the fuck away by what Nick has made over there. That shit is awesome. And if anybody's in San Francisco at a time when one of the shows are happening, you have to check this out. Gotta it go. is such a cool moment. Like, I, I don't know if you guys already explained this, but like we got to do it where it was like, we're on the inside of the boat. So yeah. it wasn't even that cold. We didn't need to deal with all that stuff, but it was, there were moments where I would look over at Mike and like tap and be like, look out the window. Cause he was high as fuck. Like I swear yeah. to God, that guy was on another planet. Uh, <laughs> but I'm like, yo, look. And like, he looks out and it's just the Bay bridge beautifully lit up, lit like up, just yeah. right there. And it was just, it's amazing. Like it is, it is such a, an insane experience. And like, Nick, I got to give you so many props, man. I have seen so many shows. I've seen so many of your shows. 
but this being something that you and your boy Austin are running, making sure you're getting all the people like you are creating the the set list of who's coming up. Like these were this was a fucking awesome showcase, and I it was it I left wanting more, and that is. Mm -hmm. Something I don't think I've ever experienced at a comedy show before. None so. of my comedy shows, for sure. I appreciate that, and I appreciate y'all coming out for that and having a good time. It's not Mike Mike from Kind of Funny. I have a quick question from the press pool, actually, about the comedy. So I noticed, of course, you were running the whole thing. I just mm -hmm. wanted to know really quick, when you go up and f flash the light to give them the high sign over mm -hmm. on the left-hand side of this, uh, the stage, how do you know that they get your high sign? Is there like an unwritten like comedy rule where like maybe he tips the mic at you or gives you a wink? Like, how did you know that Slappy one through five all knew, hey, it's my time? They usually give you a little nod. A lot they give of you a nod? it's okay. pretty subtle, but most of the time they'll be like, when you light someone, you generally wait till they're done with the joke. Um, oh, so you don't want to okay. light someone in the middle of the joke. And right when they're done, you'll light them and they'll go, they'll just give you one of those. They'll give you a quick little like i got it yeah right? plus yeah. they've done this so many times yeah. that they mm -hmm. you they kind, of kind of where you're at with yeah your, with your 10 when minutes. we you say 10 minutes you know it when we all did it for the first time our main my main concern was like i gotta watch out for the light i gotta like the, that's like one of the main things that like as somebody who had never done it is worried about but now these yeah. everybody there is pros yeah. and sometimes people don't see it so you light them a second time but for the most part i mean in a space that small it's pretty easy to see plus you know like when you're about eight minutes and you're like i'm kind of getting close to my closer where's the light and you look over you see you're like okay that makes sense um, but then my favorite thing the whole weekend happened. Uh, now, Mark Smalls was at Cops Comedy Club um, opening for Brian Simpson, who's a hilarious comic out of L.A. And I had gone the night before not knowing Mark Smalls was there. So I was like, I don't care what happens for the rest of this night. I have to see Snowbike Mike and Mark Smalls standing in the same physical space for a second because I think this is going to be an amazing thing. And boy, was we walked up and Mark literally had just finished his set and he comes out to smoke a, to smoke something and locks eyes with Snowbike Mike and Tim. It's as if I never existed. These it's two not. are growing out hard. And then the tarantula comes out and that's when we lost Snowbike Mike for that night. <laughs> now, that was, that was let, it. Let me tell, let me, let me tell a little bit of this story. Cause you're right, Nick, this was one of the oh best, if not the best moment. I got it, Nick. You ready for this? Oh, God. I so forgot about this. I'm in the car with Nick and Austin. And this is like, I'm feeling good. We just got off the boat. And Austin is hyping up Mark like, yo, he's going to be on stage. He's going to be in his prime this weekend. It's going to be fire. So now I'm riding the high, right, Tim? Bless and Andy. Like, I'm feeling good. I'm like, yeah, we about to get wild, right? Mark Smalls comes out of the comedy tour. And we're all dapping. Everybody's laughing. We're lighting up. We're passing. We're talking. We're telling stories, right? And this was the best way to meet Nick's friends and also see Nick and what I describe as his hyena buddies absolutely destroy somebody in the street, which was the best <laughs> to see. We were all sitting there telling stories, and this young kid comes up, pimples all over his maybe, face. Maybe 18. Maybe 18. And goes, yeah. excuse me, sirs, I turned 21 in one month and I forgot my ID. Would you buy me one pack of alcohol, please? And I swear to God, you guys, I look over and I'm stony blown. I'm like, uh oh. And I look over and you can see the wrong. hyenas frothing the at the mouth because they're about to destroy this kid. And, <laughs> and Mark, Mark Smalls turns, tell him, Nick. He looks at this kid and he goes, a pack of alcohol? Whatever, <laughs> officer. <laughs> like this fucking detective over here is trying to get us, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and then slowly walked away and Mark just poured into him for a solid 12. We were just, I mean, we we're dying. We're just, it's the combination of being slightly hungover and just tired. And this poor kid rolled up on the wrong group of people to ask that because we are not taking this seriously. Oh. For the next 15 minutes, it is three comedians who are in their peak for the evening coming hot off of their sets. And it is joke after joke, laughter nonstop out in front of this comedy club. It was honestly the best experience ever it was so much fun we were all laughing and dying and it was like this is exactly how i wanted to meet mark smalls and austin in real life and like to see nick with his homies and to have that just teed up for them in front of me you couldn't have written it out any better it was so so good so funny and then we all uh, met back up at grub steak and ate mozzarella sticks and then that was it that was the end of the evening. Did you guys do no, something else on the Sunday no, or was that it? Mike, Mike got Mike got lost. Mike. Oh got, God. Let me, can I tell the story? <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Let, me, let me, let me tell the story. All right. So we're freaking at this grub steak place that, that Nick uh, recommended. Uh, it's a diner and we're at this it's diner. We're eating. It, it, 
It, yeah, exactly. And it was fine. It was cool. But it's go time eventually. And it really was go time because Nick's com comedian friends were coming and like we had the table and it was like, okay, bedtime for us. <laughs> Daytime, I guess, for the fucking yeah, hyenas out there. Yeah. Uh, and which, by the way, Nick, I love you. You are a goddamn different person, and it is so funny, Andy, to see this man, Nick Scarfino, just acting like a goddamn hooligan in the streets. But story for another for another time. Anyways, we're leaving, right? And it is that moment where, okay, now we need to actually be adults for a second. We need to. We have some guests here. We got to make sure Kevin's gone, so there's no more rides. We have to make sure that Roger and Mike both get home yeah. to Kevin's house. So. We're like, okay, you guys, you're good, right? You can just Uber. We can like reimburse you later, whatever. And both of them like, oh man, we don't got Uber or Lyft. It's like, okay, cool. Let's get it downloaded. Let's figure this shit out. Again, Mike fucking on leg eight of this tarantula at this point. <laughs> We're just like, all right, whatever. We figure out, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to book the Uber for me and Gia to go home. I'm going to book a Lyft for Roger to go home because Mike was going to hang out and stay with the comedian boys. And I was like, all right, cool. This is all solved. Nick will handle Mike later or Mike will get Uber. It's going to be fucking fine. Our Uber is about to come. We say bye. We go outside. I'm with Roger. I'm like, hey, Roger, that's your Lyft. And Roger's like, cool. Thanks, man. Have a good night. Starts to cross the street to get into the Lyft. As he's doing that, Mike <laughs> comes out behind me and Gia, just like, hey, what's up, guys? And we're like, hey, what's up, Mike? And he's just kind of standing there smiling like Mike mm -hmm. does. And we're just mm -hmm. like, what, what's going on? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm meeting up Roger. We're about, we're going to just go home. And I was like, no, you're <laughs> hanging out left. with the comedians. Like, Roger's mm -hmm. gone. He's like, nah, nah, nah. I'm meeting Roger out here. We're going to, we're just going to Uber together. And I'm like, Oh my god! And I start trying to flag the car down, like, "Yo, whoa, whoa, <laughs> stop, stop, stop!" Like, like we need to let him get in. And uh, Mike's like, "Nah, man, it's cool. There's no stopping it now. Roger's gone. I'll find my way home. Don't, the Tim, don't worry about me. Don't worry about Mike, me. Mike, literally, Roger's <laughs> gone, man. And like, meanwhile, I'm seeing Roger in the car, like, pull away. Oh my god! It's we're almost in the city. wanted to get lost because he turns to me and he's like, he wait. Everyone gets up." I see Roger, everything's ordered. Y'all go outside. And it's a solid five minutes when I see a couple more comics rolling. I was like, I'm going to hang out here for a second with them and hold the table down so they can, they can have a place to eat because this place is getting packed. And Mike turns to me and he waited just, just a lesson. It was like a little too long for comfort and goes, you know what, man, you're in your element right now. And I'm, uh, I'm pretty tired. So I'm going to let you do your thing with your comics and I'm going to head out. I'll see you later, big cat. It's been a great night. And he gets up and he walks out. And I'm thinking to myself, everyone left five minutes, like at least five minutes. And they're gone, right? Oh, and it, was, it was literally one minute ago. <laughs> I, I run out to say to the comics, I was like, hey, you guys can come in. They, they just bust the table and stuff like that. And I just see Mike get into a random Uber by himself. And I was like, wait, is Roger with you? And Mike's like, don't worry about it, big dog. And it just goes. And I'm like, so, okay. We never heard from him again. From my perspective. I was ready to go, and Roger, like Tim said, pulled off. And Tim's like, oh, my God, there goes Roger. I was like, don't worry, it's the city. We're city living. I'll call mm. another one. And so here's the deal. I copy and pasted Kevin's address into a text message so I could readily grab it. And I thought, I thought in my mind that I copy and pasted Kevin's address into this Uber. Well, I guess I picked on my most recent ride, which would have been 2017 and to 21st Amendment. Because I didn't know Uber. that at all. He's right. And so all of a sudden, I come out of my drunken and stoned phase and I look up and it is pitch black. And the only thing I can see is a bright orange AT&T Giants logo. And I'm like, no, sir, <laughs> this is not where I'm supposed to go. And I'm in the panic mode of like, I'm, I'm lost. I need help. Right. And the man the from IGN <laughs> the man is not speaking English. And I'm like, sir. What do you need from me? I need you to take me to the right spot. This isn't correct. And all he says is, okay. And I'm like, no, I need some mm -hmm. guidance here and some help. Do you, I even offered, do you need me to get out of the car? And he goes, okay. And I'm like, oh, this isn't going to go well. Mm -hmm. Five minutes of us going back and forth with, okay, and I need help. I finally get him to end the route. I recall the Uber and he drives me to Kevin's house. But this was like the moment where you wake up and you finally like, sober up in an instant and you feel lost as can be and that was it and all that i had 
was the orange neon light of the baseball diamond looking at me. And I was like, yep, I'm in the wrong spot right now. <laughs> useless. You're so useless. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing is that I, le- oh, I, I left. I had I was no idea that this was happening. I left. I talked to Mike right before I left. I was like, hey, you sure you don't want to come with me? He's like, nah, I'm not a big dog. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And I left. I go back to Kevin's house. And then within five to ten minutes, fucking Mike walks into the door. And he's just like, man, I had to leave. I had to fucking leave. <laughs> I'm like, okay, Mike. Right. Mike can Mike can be sentenced to death, and we'd be like, Mike, no, like this is something. And he'd be like, don't be, I'll, don't be worried yeah, about me. You. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, while this whole thing was going on, comics from all the clubs and all the and all the smaller shows all realize that this is the hang, and so they all start coming, right? And so the guy's like, I'm just gonna take everyone's order, and I'm gonna ring you up as I order your stuff. Okay. And I'm like, cool. What could possibly go wrong? Because this is a table of like, I don't know how many comics and they're all in various states of inebriated flash forward. Andy, he just keeps bringing patty melts to the table. (laughs) Everyone gets their food. But after the third patty melt, I turn to the guy and I'm like, stop bringing patty melts. to the, It's the third. There's three extra patty melts on the table. Stop. I'm like, are there more patty melts coming? I was like, I think there are. I'm like, don't bring that we don't have room in the table for the patty melts everyone went home with a spare patty melt that night mike if you just stuck around you've been fucking swimming in these things it was ridiculous uh well i guess that's is that the end of the weekend does anyone no, have anything it's not. No. Well, we can, we can Sunday, that that we'll quickly the say the next day some of the people went to brunch and i'm sure it was a great brunch but then we went awesome. to greg miller's place for a big family oh, barbecue right. oh, yeah, right. it was fucking awesome Wait. their place is beautiful we had one a great I, time one thing i do want to point out is that um Every, Tim looked at me and goes, Andy, you're you're not going to Nick's comedy thing, right? And I said, Nick, I'll do respect for you. You know who I am. You totally. know how I am. Totally. And I said, Tim, I wasn't going to go before I knew how I was feeling right now. Of course. And I am on se- six hours of, of Six Flags, and my legs are just ripped yeah. apart. <laughs> like, I am I'm so shocked. I am so fucking tired. I'm going to go home and shower. And I remember, and then... And here I am. After a late night, Kevin texts me, "Hey Andy, uh, we're gonna get brunch in the morning. You in?" <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, "Kevin, I'm gonna sleep until two fucking thirty in the afternoon <laughs> tomorrow. I'm sorry, dog." So <laughs> I was sh- I was shocked to see Mike and Roger go to Nick Nick's comedy thing because I was right with Andy where by by the end of Six Flags, I had never felt that tired. Like I had just went through. One, a previous day of hanging out and waking up that morning hungover and then going and riding a bunch of roller coasters and standing around and walking around for seven hours straight. I was like, cool, I really want to do the comedy thing, but there's no way I'm going. And I get the same exact text from Kevin that night of like, hey, don't forget about brunch tomorrow. And I was like, oh, yeah, there's a kind of funny brunch. It's going to be a work wide thing. I guess I'll go. That sounds like a good time. Flash forward to the next morning, Sunday morning, and I get a text from Roger and he's like, are you coming to brunch? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, 11 a.m., right? All right, cool, yeah, I'll be there. And on the way there, I asked Roger, because I'm running slightly late, I'm like, hey, like, who's all who's all there so far? Uh, and then Roger responds, it's just you, me, Paula, Joey, and Kevin. LOL, we're almost there. <laughs> to which so I everybody realized... said no. <laughs> yeah, then I realized, oh, this is the company white thing. To which I respond back to Roger, oh, really? Damn, I thought, I, damn, I thought it, this is a company-wide brunch, LOL. Uh, Roger responds back, it is, but they're all soft. I respond Damn. back. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I respond have to expose back. me like that, but I mean. <laughs> I respond back, Damn, I could have stayed home. And that was that's where that, that ended. But and you well, that reminds <laughs> me quick. that wasn't the end because in between no, the brunch and the barbecue, we went to go watch a movie. Wait, before <laughs> so, you go, oh, yeah. this was quite and, the fucking and, weekend. And, and then I ate too many there. peanut MMs and my stomach was fucked. Oh my god, so, that was terrible. Yeah. Uh, but before before we went to the movies, there was one small thing that we like l- the, the only little tiny thing that happened at brunch, which is we all decided, oh, a cup of a cup of uh, clam chowder would be really good, oh, right? God, you know, before boy. before getting our our meal. <laughs> Nick, just so you know, it was very good. It was. Oh, perfect. I bet. The only problem is nobody said. Cup. Give it better for a hangover. Nobody clam said clam chowder. Cup. So we all had bowls. Oh, y'all got bowls. Giant good for you. Bowls of clam chowder, and let me tell you, we destroyed it too. So good, so good. It might have been the clams then that that so hurt Nick, Roger's stomach. Maybe the peanuts. We, we don't know. There's a lot of food involved. So after the brunch, we go see this movie. Then after this movie, we go to Greg's barbecue. Uh, this movie called Zola. 
Oh, okay. It's an A24 movie. Nick, so very after that, good. We, you would like it go, a lot. We, we go to this barbecue, and it was fucking great, with one exception. And that one exception is that Kevin goddamn Coelho could not go two sentences without trying to convince each and every person there <laughs> to wake up the next morning and go to Six Flags again. Nick, Nick, 45 minutes in and out. We go on all the rides, two hours from this is a great door idea. to door. Um, for from every door time I heard door. Kevin pitch that exact scenario, I would have billions of dollars at this point. Door to door, Nick, just, two um, hours, done. In miserable. and out. Roger was the that only sounds- one in, but he was fucking dying from... His stomach. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. Roger. I'm well, sorry. We, I wish Mike had rallied. Really broke my heart to see Mike fall apart. Oh, no. Here's weekend. the thing. All the, funny, the funniest fucking thing is like they're trying to get Mike to stay one extra night to do something the next day. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think Mike's going to stay an extra night. I'm definitely not going to Fiesta, yes, Texas. Kevin, I'm glad you gave up on me as soon as you did. But you were still in on trying to convince Tim. Tim wanted to go, but realized that it Dude, wasn't a smart decision I, to go. No, no. I, I said it. If I convinced Tim, then Mike was going to be in. If I had Mike and Tim, we could probably convince Blessing. And if the whole crew's coming, Andy's in again. Andy's in again. <laughs> No, here's how There's I knew no you. Here's how I knew you lost from the beginning. Because as we're all about to head out, I go, "All right, later, Mike. Uh, have a good one, bro. We had a great dinner today here at Greg's." And I'm like, "Are you gonna go back to your place to pick up your shit?" He goes, "Oh no, I packed up all my shit this morning. Yeah, no. Yeah, I I'm no, headed I back right now. <laughs> we were we were we were on the way to Grubhub, and I'm like, "When are you gonna leave?" Mike's like, "I'm thinking about leaving tonight." I'm like, "Mike, you can't you cannot leave tonight. You're four tarantulas deep in this motherfucker." But I would do we did you do what you, you were gonna do, Mike? Just go to the barbecue for a hot second and then bounce out. Or yeah, did you, uh-huh. yeah, exactly smart. that. I was all packed that makes up. Sense. You're happy, like and you know, hour, yeah. you know, or whatever. You know what, you're, all you your know what Mike does? Up. He walks up to me and he says. You know, if the barbecue was your house, I definitely would be staying. And I'd be like, I <laughs> you hate liar. you right now. I He's hate so you shit. right now. He's no, so he would have gotten that. He would. We would have gotten him wasted. And then it's easy. Mike, but he has to stay. You know. And Mike that's like one well, priority. Now it's the morning, and there's nothing to do. Why not go to Six Flags? God damn it, Mike, Mike wanted to play Warzone. That's why he wanted to get back yeah. to the Discord to play Warzone. Uh, well, I'm glad you guys had a great time. I would have loved to have joined you for all that stuff, but I had a wedding to go to on Sunday. So after all three of those days, I had to get my ass in a suit that thankfully fits somehow. I have no idea. I don't know if I stretched it out a lot last time, but I got my suit and we spent all day up at Calistoga at my friend's wedding and it was lovely. And then by my, I just, I slept all day Monday. That was it. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh, I, yeah. I, I woke but, up, bless, I got a burrito, that I watched Monday. Tomorrow Wars. That was it. I had a wild Monday. Fuck yeah. I don't have any stories from it, but I like I Monday was the day where I was like, okay, you know what? This whole last weekend was a kind of funny weekend. I'm gonna find time to celebrate my birthday. And it was the it was the fun thing of reading the vibes by Sunday night and inviting people to be like, hey, if you guys want to come out, come through. We're gonna go to uh, the plan was karaoke, but then yeah. that got shifted to going to the Emporium, doing a bunch of barcade shit, and then eventually we did end up going to karaoke, which was a blast. But by the time we got to Monday, I was like, there's no way that anybody from kind of funny is coming out because y'all went through something including me like even mm-hmm. me i was like i'm i the only reason i'm going is because it's my birthday yeah <laughs> and i've already <laughs> made the thing to invite people and have people come through and so i can't cancel this whole shit i me saw a plan to go like we yeah. were we were going and it was like halfway through the day and i'm like i just can't and i texted you blessed i'm like i am so sorry i am oh, done yeah, no. and oh i needed it so bad now i feel fucking great here we are one of the best podcasts we ever recorded yeah by, t- by tuesday i was dead i should have took the day off honestly i think i showed up on gamescast and i like i got a call from tim and tim being like hey man i'm looking at the calendar trying to plan some things and all that call i i woke up to that call and tim i know you could for sure tell from my voice Good. I couldn't, no. no. Okay, because I, I could have sworn I had like that hungover. Like, uh-huh. I'm, I, I've Kill slept me. in. I'm barely hanging in there. And I'm talking mm-hmm. to him on a, on a work call, trying to figure out what the calendar is going to be like for the next week. I had went I had went through shit that la- that last night, but it was a fantastic con- fa- fantastic time because yeah we did we did Emporium which is a great arcade and then karaoke was one of the most memorable <laughs> things I've done in SF so far. Man, where I'm... I don't know if you guys have done Mint karaoke in sf but it was an experience like it was a, it was very much an experience from but it's it's bar karaoke and so it's not separated by rooms as people yeah, go on stage real karaoke okay because this room karaoke bullshit is for the birds if you're not embarrassing exactly. yourself in front of 200 people who are drunk and don't like you then you're not doing karaoke correctly you have yeah. to earn their respect 
And the one thing I want to shout out from that night is shout out to the homie Chastity, who plenty of people know, uh, who used to mm-hmm. be at GameSpot. Chastity. What she sing? She sang a couple of things. Oh God, I can't Did remember. She sang so, I remember. It's she not fair to go to karaoke with somebody like Chastity, who's like actually a good singer. She used to be like and a I didn't know that. I didn't know that she yeah, was she that talented. Favorite. And so when she went oh, on yeah. stage, I had so I had to follow Chastity, which I was like, okay, cool. You know, it's Terrible gonna be a fun time. I'm gonna I'm gonna do Kanye West Homecoming. This is gonna be a great time. And I'm also gonna do Best I Ever Had by Drake. It's gonna be great. Chastity goes up there and gives one of the best performances I've ever seen in my life. It was otherworldly how yeah. one fantastic she sounded on mic, but then also her stage presence was unlike anything I'd ever seen where she was <laughs> interacting with the crowd. She was like getting in people's faces. She was like, uh, uh, livening up the crowd in a way where uh, Chastity I know is like, she's from, I've, I've hung out with her only a few times since coming to SF. She seems cool. She seems like a very reserved person though, but on stage she was shining <laughs> in a way where I was like, Holy shit. Like there is talent here. Like you could go out and be a star. I was very oh, yeah. impressed. But that was well, that that was karaoke. For me. I definitely crazy. wanted to go, but I had no voice left by Monday and my bed was calling. And uh but well, I'll get you on the next one for sure because karaoke's oh, yeah. been a thing in my and people a lot of people have been asking me to come to karaoke and I, I haven't gone in a few years. So uh we're gonna have to make another kind of funny karaoke trip. I wanna go back I do to wanna I do wanna say that Greg's house is beautiful. It was awesome to be there uh with him and everybody and eat some amazing food. Greg oh made God, the ribs. ribs were so good. They were absolutely that delicious. Burst um oh the uh, squash blossoms oh my god those so are delicious good. as well the mm. hamburger everything was fantastic i just feel like this weekend was non-stop eating amazing <laughs> food and hanging with amazing people it was awesome yeah also shout out to the cheesecake that showed up at greg's place which to me was the final stamp on the luck yeah. for, from over the weekend because there was the whole bit from kfgd of, of kevin getting the cheesecake and me getting the regular chocolate cake with strawberries which is great i love the regular cake i love the cake that greg got me but you know cheesecake is on another level and so the yeah, fact that is. the fact that yeah. that narrative finally came all the way around and i ended up getting my cheesecake on sunday it was a beautiful thing it's a really beautiful thing real, well real ladies quick. and gentlemen oh i was i was gonna add just a tiny bit extra i just wanted to give you guys a little little image of what happened on on tuesday and just a tiny bit on sunday where i stayed home or monday i stayed home and slept the entire day and then I woke up at like six o'clock, went to San Jose, picked up some Atmos speakers and installed them into my house. That was awesome. It was a blast. The next day, uh, Roger, it's his last day, right? So he's heading back at like his flight is at 10 o'clock, I think, 10 p.m. And Tuesday is my early day, so I'm, I have more availability. So we did a little quick tour of SF and it was a blast. Roger, you're my favorite. Well, Joey's my favorite, but Roger, you. you're close number two, my guy. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're our favorite. Thank you so much for listening to our Wacky Weekend. If you're watching this on YouTube, by the way, uh, hey, let us know what you did for your 4th of July weekend and or as we'll now call it Blessings Weekend uh, because happy birthday, Blessings. Sorry, we couldn't see you. Uh, And if you're listening to some podcast services, tweet the link of this episode to your friend and say, these guys are so crazy. I bet you can't listen to at least two and a half hours of them talking about their Magic Mountain pooping story and just (laughs) see what happens. Uh, Post show people, we love you very much. Sorry about this week, but we'll get you next week on the next one. I hope this is worth it for you. And until then, I love you. Bye.